seen a ghost. Walter. No! My plastic surgeon doesn't want me doing any activity where balls fly at my nose. Welcome back to Literally Movies on this fine, beautiful Saturday. And it is beautiful up here in the Pacific Northwest anyway. It's gorgeous. We've got all kinds of stuff out to see. Some of it good, some of it not so great. Am I right, Chris? I agree, yes. Yeah. 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 We'll get into that. <laughs> we will. We're going to yeah. get deep into it. Hello, Alan. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, we did have some technical difficulties today, so I am sorry. Thank you so much for being patient. It's good to see the Chris fan club out here no, alive kicking. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about myself. There yeah, are yeah, people yeah. here that we recognize. Hello, Miss Angie. Hi, how you doing? Ace of Card, hello. Dark Slayer, hello. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give, give, give him a little wave, Chris. Give yeah, hi, 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 Dark right. Slayer. Man. I have a big head. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read the comment. I just oh, assumed. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if someone three, says head, it's about me. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Which is a bad. nice, it gives it gives my five head a nice break, too. There you go. Room to breathe. Mm. You know, pun intended. So. Uh, Austinic, hey, how's it going, Chris? Who's that? Yeah, this, this, this some guy just some schmuck. <laughs> schmuck we needed to fill the space, so we thought, you know, this guy. I got the fill. head for it, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. A lot of space. That's why I'm down here. <laughs> I need all for me. <laughs> oh, we're getting closer every day. Yeah. It's very lovely. Uh, he brought his crew with him. He sure did. Absolutely. <laughs> So welcome, y'all. Um, I, you know, we had 45 minutes to uh, to get ready, and I had still have not looked at the show notes. So what's on the agenda today, Alan? I guess we did should. Did you first... watch any of those trailers I told you to watch? Did you tell me to watch trailers? Awesome. Oh, my internet is. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, did... oh my gosh! Is this happening? For Her computer's everyone? gonna freeze. Maybe. No. no. Is it? Oh no, no. no. If she freezes, you can't hear me. So. That would be Good crazy. Inside. I'm gonna have to. You're moving. Oh, is everyone's internet? It was... You're talking. My internet's good. Chrome. Okay. Okay. Weird. You're doing good. It's fine. It was the new literallymovies.com that was fucking it up. Yeah. Ah, yeah, to make tabs. As soon page. as I closed it, it was good. That's what there happens. Go. Figure that out. Okay. All right. Well, now I have no access to show notes, but what have we been watching? Why don't you, okay. uh, yeah. I'll tell, go for it. Let's, uh, yeah. let's start with that. Yeah. What have you been watching, Chris? What have you been watching? I've you been, been watching a ton of stuff. Um, Still watching X-Men 97. Oh, hell yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've just been so surprised and floored by this show and this most recent episode, which was trending on every social media platform. Everyone was posting the reactions to it. I did my own audio commentary for it and I was so impressed. I, I, yeah. I was crying at the end of it. I couldn't believe it. And I, um, I was crying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just of what they were doing. I was, I can't believe they're doing this and it's so well animated, so well written. The voice acting is superb. They're taking these characters in directions. I never thought they would have taken them in an animated format and it's great. Um, you know, the X-Men are triumphantly returning right now. And with things like Deadpool and Wolverine on the horizon, eventually making their debut in the MCU, this is a great reintroduction to them. Yeah. So if you guys are not on the X-Men 97 uh, train right now, those who are watching, please get on that train. Cause it's, it's great. Um, yeah. I'm still watching. I started fallout and I've watched the first two episodes and I've, I'm really enjoying it so far. That first episode is like a movie in itself. It's hour right. 15 mm -hmm. minutes. I like that. We're seeing it from three different perspectives, you know, kind of the vault dweller, you know, perspective, people that have been, you know, in these giant, you know, um, in vaults, you know, ever since the, the war happened, nuclear Armageddon happened. Then you have like this whole character, which belongs to this uh, like militaristic organization called Brother of Steel, seeing that perspective. And then like a bounty hunter, cowboy ghoul. And uh, I think it's as someone who's a fan of the Fallout, you know, franchise I played a, a number of the games right now. They're nailing the aesthetic and I'm really liking the kind of three different perspectives so far. So that's been great. And yeah, um, you know, uh, I didn't see the second episode. I only saw the first mm, one and I first, actually yeah. didn't play the games either. But they have such an iconic look to them that yes. I'm very familiar with the style. Um, it, But I was surprised at how funny it was. Oh, yeah. Like mm -hmm. it was it was subtly funny. It was very like um, it was kind of sophisticated, if I if I can say that. But what do you think of the humor? And and does it does it persist through the second episode? Uh, yeah. Oh, it, it's even the, the second episode really leans into the humor. I think it's really? even funnier. Um, it gets it gets goofier. That's the thing about like Fallout, even though like the subject you know matter it's dealing with is like very yeah. serious and there's death constantly. It's nuclear Armageddon. The, some of the best aspects of Fallout is the goofier stuff. It's all the side quests. It's all the weird people you encounter um, on your on your you adventure. Exactly. Yeah, friends, <laughs> enemies, you know, abominations you you meet along the way. It's it's uh, it's great. And the Pip Boy uh, too, right? The little just, yeah, the Pip Boy. The like yeah, the, it's his, there's that, that subtle smart. It's just a smart sense of humor. I love it. Like it's very like satirical. Giving tutorials of how to use weapons to kill, mm -hmm. you know, things. And it's, it's like really cute. And it's like, ah, oh, this is how you blow this guy's head off. Pretty I much. Remember, remember, yeah, remember to hit this button or something like that. And I really love that. They've always, always done a great job. Are there creatures? That. Me too. Yeah. Oh, a ton. 
Oh, yeah. Ton of creatures. Yeah, like yeah you see horror if, beasts. Yeah, matter of fact, there is a fleshy horror beast in the second episode that oh, you'll no mention. No way. We're, we're, yeah. we're, that. we're doing uh, that tonight. Yeah. But followed yeah. so far, I, um, I'm i very impressed with it. I'm kind of shocked that it's uh, they dumped it all at once. Yeah. I thought yeah. this would be Weird, like right? a weekly series. but Especially for know. HBO. That's not normally what they well, do. Well, that's what is HBO. It? This is uh, Amazon. This is Amazon. So, yeah. oh, HBO would have done Amazon. the right thing and dumped it every week. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They know what they're doing. But I don't yeah. know. It just would have give it that nice weekly... We're yeah. talking about it. That Eight weeks episode. of it. Eight yeah. weeks of conversation about it yeah. at the very least. So that that to me is interesting. But yeah, I'm really liking it so far. Uh, and then in terms of movies, um, I recently saw Civil War, which, you know, is, oh, my God, everyone's going. It, it, it's crazy. This movie has been generating so many different reactions, even really? like up to its release day. People were either elated about it, mad about it, saying that it's a right wing thing, a left wing thing, everything. And for the longest time, I was saying, I just think it looks kind of goofy. I think it looks mm-hmm. kind of kind of silly, honestly. I think it's just capitalizing on the political um, fervor of a presidential election year. And, you know, I saw the movie and everyone's saying, you know, so many different things about it. But for me, it's like the movie's not really saying anything. That's my biggest issue with it. Like, it doesn't provide a lot of context for, as to why this new American, second American civil war is happening outside of maybe a, 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 th- a few throwaway lines. It doesn't explain why California and Texas are aligned in this. You know, they have an alliance. You know, they don't really they don't explain, explain these up. No, That's not at all. They just mentioned it. And, and because sci-fi they're... for sure, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it, uh, because there's such a lack of context for anything that it's hard for me to feel invested in this world. And the characters, um, you know, which are these photojournalists and journalists that go on this journey uh, to interview the last sitting president, uh, Nick Offerman, <laughs> of course, Nick Offerman? who's barely in the movie. Oh. Who's barely in the movie, by the way. He has like oh, a man, I got me up here and then plummeted. Yeah, that's too bad. They don't do a lot of interesting things with them. But the thing with the characters is they're just not very interesting. You know, they don't really have compelling mm-hmm. conversations. And there are a handful of scenes that are thrilling and well directed. Uh, Jesse Plemons is a standout in the film. He's great. He's, he's typically great in everything yeah, he does. He really is. Uh, and he's very much a creep in this. And he is, and he nails it. His creepiness. That's our uh, favorite creep. role. For always him. a creep. Yeah, always, always a creep. A creep. Uh, and there's some good action in it uh, occasionally. It's not a, it's not an action film. It's not like the, the trailers. It's it's a road trip movie. It's a road trip movie oh, for okay. most of it, punctuated by action scenes, a couple, and some thrilling scenes. But really, it's just the last third where it's a straight up Call of Duty campaign, a oh. uh, mediocre one at that. And then I don't like how it ends, especially. It, the one thing this movie indulges in that annoys me, it's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like annoying child characters that are precocious and bratty for no reason. And we follow a character that's part of this group that does just that. And oh, just, I also oh, hate that. No. And it, and they create and they're just there to create faux conflict when it's not necessary. So yeah. I, I didn't care for the film all that much. Because I'm aligned with you and I absolutely hate that. Who is like who's the character that comes to mind when you think of the most annoying, precocious, bratty kid character in any film oh my god oh, that that's is a good uh, question actually. that is really that's a really good question oh. and i'm going to use this to build my letterbox list so do you have one off your mind yeah do you have me? one off the yeah. top of your me? head yeah, yeah. No, I, I, okay sh- i yeah. mean they're all that's such a, a jumble question, because though. i i kind of just lump them all into one all personality. Same. yeah they're yeah. all yeah. the same Man. oh we did just watch one too but okay, well you I'll see them all the time it's definitely something that comes up wow okay yeah i am wondering if um Borderlands might be like that, like that that young girl. Oh, oh. Tiny Tina, her Tiny character. Tina. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that's I right. Can... It's Tiny Tina. Yeah, she annoys me. Everything Borderlands. Me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, fair. Yeah, some people don't drive with that humor. I get it. Yeah. Oh, so what does Civil War aim to be? Because it almost seems like, and now I understand why mm. um, that you called it uh, cowardly. Yeah. Because it seems like it'd be hard to not put context to those relationships. Like Dark Slayer was saying in the chat, like Texas would rather burn than accept help from <laughs> California. Like it, it, the fact that they don't provide any reason for it just seems like they're afraid to be too political, which is, yeah. I mean, if you're not going to take any risks, why make a movie about civil war? Well, that's a very good point because a uh, civil war is inherently political. <laughs> I mean, usually there's a divide. There's a reason why the civil war is happening. Yeah. And um, in this movie, they don't really provide any political, societal, cultural context outside of maybe the sitting U.S. president has become a fascist. Um, mm-hmm. But the the thing that the movie seems intent on commenting on is is uh, photojournalism, them like photojournalists and the profession it, it itself, and saying how it's it's it alleges that these people um, that participate in this career become desensitized to violence and that 
like the thing they constantly do bring up in the movie itself is we're always we're just there to get that perfect shot always. And and I guess you could say that's what the movie's commenting on is is photo war photojournalism and how okay. detached it to be from conflicts. But I just didn't find myself attached to these characters because they didn't really provide a lot of interesting things for them together to do. Are and they so, making a statement using that like photojournalism being detached from conflict? Because that's not often the case. I mean that it's an right, yeah. Public, yeah it's a common perception. But. Yeah yeah I, I, uh, like it's just it's just alleging that which I'm like well I want to actually talk to some photojournalists who are in war mm-hmm. in war and wartime time in these types of conflicts if if this is true. So yeah. even then, like what it seems to be uh, uh, proposing, I, I think is kind of suspect. And I don't mm-hmm. know if it's based in reality. And so that's why I just thought the, the movie's kind of about nothing to me outside of maybe a cool thrilling sequences and Jesse Plemons. I just I just think it's an empty movie. But it's so mm-hmm. fascinating to see how so many people are having different reactions to it. And you could tell the people who haven't seen it because you have people on the left saying, I hate this movie for this. And then people on the right saying, I hate this movie for this. And it's just like, well, you're both wrong because that's not what the movie's saying because it's not saying right. anything. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. That's, and maybe that's, that's, that's what they aim to do. They aim yeah. to offend no one, which is a mistake. Oh, that yeah. That sucks. Man. Yeah. I like that director too. I, I, I like it. I like I like him a lot. Uh, except Garland. for recently I think I read something he says taking a break after this movie, like it wore him yeah. down. He's like, I'm done. I need a break. This whole thing. But I don't know. I guess this movie made the most money for an opening of A twenty four. Someone said someone someone's saying that today was that today or something? Um Yep. So wow. people are interested in this a lot more than I thought. Maybe I thought just, it was just gonna kinda go on. It's like the Call of Duty so. the movie. Yeah, they just want yep. some Call of Duty. The new campaign hasn't come out, so we're Cash all getting bored. <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah, I don't, you know, it's funny, funny you say Call of Duty because I've always wanted, this is a side thing, but I've always wanted a uh, to be a war photographer class in mm. Call of oh. Duty. And that could just be because I, I like cinematography in games, but sure. I wanted to take pictures of other people shooting each other and get rated on that. Uh, I always wanted that to be the class. That That's interesting. So you yeah. want to do like Pokemon Safari. But I want to do Pokemon Duty. Safari and Call of Duty. I want to be that Call guy. Duty. I try not to get That's killed, cool. you know. Yeah, but I get the good shots, and at the yeah. end of the, the match, I show your your shots. Hey, look how good you looked when you did that. That that's shot, an interesting you know? game concept. I actually yeah. like that. Yeah, I've yeah, always I wanted that. So, mm-hmm. but I've pitched yeah. it. I feel maybe like if, even times. Maybe even Battlefield though. was better with their class building. You could have had that. It was very close. Oh, wow, yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. well, yeah. too bad. Too bad about Civil War. Yeah, uh, I, that I, so I, I don't have too much excitement to see it. Tell you the truth, I wasn't really interested. Yeah, so. I mean, Austin makes a great point too. Is like Nightcrawler had a lot of commentary on journalism and violence. Oh yeah, and they did it so well. Oh, that was brilliantly. Yeah, that's how you do it. Oh, Pokemon Snap is the game. Yeah, Pokemon you're right. Snap. Snap. Thank that's you, Austin Nick, for, okay. <laughs> for outing yourself as a huge dork. Yeah, hey, I love Pokemon Snap. Pokemon Snap that was, well, that was my childhood amazing. right there. Hell yeah, so I got good. an N64 just for that. Yeah. <laughs> the teen girl from Imaginary was annoying for no reason. Mm. There you go. See, that's one of those. Yeah, that's the, the perfect example. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There you go. I might have been Googling annoying kids in movies, and there are way too <laughs> yeah. many. Uh, Night Swim, Night Swim, the, the teenage daughter oh, is a dick for no reason. Mm. Yeah, that oh, one. Now, I'm, now, now they're coming to me. Now they're I'm all coming to me. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I knew. It. Just let it simmer for a little bit. Yeah. They're, they're oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> Did we see anything this week at all? I think besides X-Men, we watched X-Men. We nice. watched Fallout. Same kind of opinions we had. I think the one thing we watched, we try to watch a movie throughout the week if we get time. I think I watched, I showed her, I showed you Rookie of the Year. Oh. which is a oh yeah yeah okay Watch so that. I, yeah i'm a big baseball fan movie though i hate baseball i like movies with baseball <laughs> in it okay uh feel the dreams rookie of the yeah, year he doesn't like being in war but he wants to take pictures league of their own yeah. you know it's uh, classic sandlot like all of them sandlot, yeah uh, I love sandlot. uh even like basketball ones like blue chips or mm-hmm. uh god there's so many other ones like you got game with spike Lee are there anything or... you don't like no no, there are ones I don't like, like okay. Angels in the Outfield. I felt was just a <gasps> How too... could you? I think I was too old for that the one. I think one Rookie I Year was mine. The one I watched at YMCA sleepovers all the time. <laughs> it's the one you hate. But it was fun revisiting that since I hadn't seen it for so long. Uh, nice. Since I was a kid and uh, just uh, seeing why I liked it. I think mm-hmm. I, as a kid, I liked just the young boy gets to go to the, the major league. Uh, sure. With a cool superpower. He pretty much gets a superpower <laughs> with his, <laughs> his arm doing that... <laughs> Throws oh, it, yep. thing, I, and, th- yeah. There's a lot of uh, a lot of sound effects in oh, the yeah. in the it arm. It really cracks. Oh, yeah. You hear his muscles yeah. really pulling on that Ooh, one. Intense. Uh, and yeah. Daniel Stern directed it, which I had no idea. Um, oh wow! And he is in it, and every every yeah. every, uh, every scene with him is like over the top comedic, like screwball comedy. Like it doesn't fit the tone. He's of the, the only movie. one in the movie doing that shit. Yeah, oh, it it's is so weird. It is hilariously yeah. how bad that was, and he's the hmm. guy who directed it. But he's, uh, he's like half a second away from saying yikes all the time. <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yikes. Yeah, listen, uh-huh. kid. 
He's like talking like that type of voice. Yeah. He's like chewing. He, he has Baseball like hits him on the head. Yeah. He falls <laughs> over. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But I, I enjoyed the movie. Just like, I was like, this is still pretty good. You know, I, I you like the ending, right? Okay, maybe not for her. She was playing Steam Deck while we were watching it. I had so. to. I had to do something. It works. Playing Stimulate poker. my mind. Half watching. Aww. I was just looking over. I look over. I'm like smiling. Yeah, you're like, yeah. That's nice. Good for you. This is cute. <laughs> I think that's the only movie we watched this this week. I think, right? Um, I think so. Is that the only one? Yeah. No. Well, you know, I have just been itching to talk about this. Go is, for it. Is we watched the last, well, the most recent episode of Shogun. Mm, and I've been dying yeah. to talk to you about it because our last conversation, we were talking about how people compare it to Game of Thrones. And I was like, well, that's ridiculous. They're completely different. And now that we've seen the most recent episode, I'm like, oh, I kind of see it now. It, it's just like the the drama, the, like how it's drawn out. And now that the game is becoming bigger and it's mm. having like more of a like countrywide impact, it now does seem like it's a Seven Kingdoms type of issue. So... I, I'm, I'm kind of getting that. Are you keeping up with Shogun? Yeah, I'm still watching Shogun. I watched most recent episode, and you know, this is the this is the point where everything's like super dire now mm -hmm. because of the circumstances, all the recent betrayals and backstabbing, yeah. and you our know, favorite characters are on the chopping block any, yeah. any moment now. Anyone some some have gotten chopped. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> too, so gotten chopped. Yeah. It's like wow. Yeah, no, I'm I've been really enjoying the uh, the the show quite a bit, and I've liked just the um the change in a lot of people's relationships and how they perceived each other at one point, and now they seem to be like i want nothing to do with you <laughs> you yeah. know so like you know john blackthorne's character he's just like i just want to get the fuck out of here yeah you know and so um yeah i'm loving all that and i and i love how not to get into spoilers but yeah. i love that because he's kind of acclimated now to the japanese mm -hmm. society he's just like i don't really want to go back to england i don't fucking like the, the, my, yeah. my 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 yeah. crew they're all scumbags and i'm just yeah. like ah, i want to kind of stay here yeah. so that's he's interesting assimilated. yeah he's assimilated to the yeah. culture it he turned. He literally turns his back on his crewmate when he sees them in the alley, right? Because he's, yeah. he's embarrassed. He's ashamed. Yep. He's all drunk and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the the character of Buntado is really interesting. Mariko's husband. Yeah. Because he is a piece of shit sometimes, but yep. the way that he he loves her in a very interesting way. It's like I, I know it's driven by possession. I get mm. that, but the hurt is still just as real, I think, that if it was like a genuine, compassionate, like wholesome type of affection. Mm -hmm. uh, so when he's like, let's die together, I'll give you what you want. He's really doing his best, right? From what he understands about her. Mm -hmm. And then man, in his most vulnerable, vulnerable moment, she goes, even after all these years, you still don't understand. I'm just trying to get away from a life with you. And I, <sighs> I felt bad for this yeah. abuser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we physically abuse, abusive, emotionally abusive. We've seen yeah. that, but like, and that, and that's what that's when you know it's it's a it's a very well written show where they yeah. they they had the, those feelings come come out of you for this mm -hmm. character and his breakdown. He he does this beautiful tea ceremony for her, and it's like yeah. you know really showing his affection. But yeah, 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 it's interesting. It's great. Yeah, good show. it's a good show. Yeah, uh, I think that is all we've seen. That's all we've seen. X Men. That that's it. Yeah, and X Men. Yeah, we we'll have to talk about that later. I'm still I I'm st know. still too soon to talk about it. I always feel like scared to like get into <laughs> specifics for that episode because yeah, of just, I don't want. It like, was wow. mind blowing. So yeah. yeah, even for me, and uh, it was just funny. It was especially funny to, for me to be next to him watching it mm. because when uh, when happen. the big guy arrives and you realize who he is and like where he's come from, he was surprised, and I yeah. was surprised that he was surprised because it does make sense. Although you don't expect it, mm -hmm. there's a lot going anything. on there. Yeah, it was agreed. Yeah. Anyways, I stayed stayed off social media after that one. I almost want to take off work that day. I was like, I should take that day. Away. <laughs> I know your plans there. to watch it only on Saturday mornings are completely. That foiled. did not happen. No. That does not happen. You have to watch it early now. I do. I yeah. think so. Um, well, uh, well, speaking of, uh, let me let me go to the comments before you yeah. move sure. on. Sure. Oh, okay. The thing that you do. Sorry. God. <laughs> Uh, circling back on Civil War, and said also about how America just goes to these different countries and takes pictures and report, and then um, yeah, I report on them. I could totally believe a lot of these people don't put their emotions into it. Uh, speaking on how those things are different, right. like I see how journalism's not part of it. Yeah, but you know, terrible things happen to journalists, and I'm surprised that there still doesn't seem to be a movie about that. Right? How That's a good question. Go reporting on that because you you read them in the headlines all the time. Like yes, you know, a certain journalist is in a different country. They've been taken hostage. Terrible things happen to them. They die mysteriously. That kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And someone made a someone made a good point that you know if uh, if Civil War wasn't in the title, 
no one will be talking about this this movie. Mm. Oh God, I, I'm trying to remember. There was this one film um, in the '80s that kind of went into photo journalism and these journal. Oh, I forgot what it was. The Killing Fields. Is that what it was? I think it's called the Killing Fields, and and they kind of explored that. These jour- journalists and and like their contacts were embedded there uh, in this. Ah, oh, forget the the, that the is context. The, that everything. Is the film. Yeah, Killing yeah. Fields, oh. and um and I forget what country it takes place in. What conflict? Cambodia. There. Cambodia. Thank you. And um, like it's them trying to get their contacts out of there, and they have to, and they're because it's I think it's Pol Pot's regime, right? Is it a Pol Pot? And um, uh, in any case, but like they're means. they're trying to. That's like I think that was the dictator of Cambodia. Oh, okay. I could be wrong though. But in any case, um, they were trying to like get them out. So that's kind of about like photojournalism and how they were initially cut themselves off, and then it's like we're investing ourselves now because we 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 have relationships with these people and we're trying to save them. So that was pretty well done, in my opinion. Khmer Rouge. Oh, is that what it was? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's interesting. And and nothing's come out since then. That was forty years ago. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I haven't watched Shogun. Too much crap to watch. What other kind of crap are you watching when you're not watching Shogun? Fallout, Fallout X Men. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Invincible I mean, just wrapped up not too long ago. Oh yes, Invincible is yeah, one we've been was watching. Too, yeah. yeah, that, that was, was good. Awesome. Yeah, that was that was that was gut wrenching. I mean, him jumping through all those portals and being tricked into like portaling in and out and then yeah. like, breaking the mom's arm and such a. <laughs> The, it was visually stunning. I mean, like not stunning, like a oh, wow, beautiful. But I would like couldn't move my body. Yeah, it was... these animated shows are really getting pretty powerful. I'll and tell you and right yet now. they still had More humor sliced into all of these like mm-hmm. crazy action scenes. Yeah. You have like the little gums where he's asking Batman about his name. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a man who's afraid of bats, and your yeah. name is. You don't think it's a little on the nose, <laughs> and then you just like zip off into him, like you know, pummeling the guy, and it's uh, it's crazy. It's crazy what they can manage to pull off in just what like twenty five minutes yeah. per episode. Yeah. Those episodes yeah. are like they're about forty minutes, are I would they? say. Okay. Forty five minutes, okay. yeah. yeah. X Men is like twenty five, I think. That yeah, X Men. Yeah, X Men is like twenty five. But like um, that. Invincible it's a fast at times. I, I, as much as I love yeah. X Men, my only critique is that sometimes things move. Yes really fast where i'm like yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah. so much good stuff could we just slow down a little bit but i understand it's it's a big there's a big stories here we gotta get through so mm-hmm. yeah um, I'm it's overwhelming it. for me especially because i'm not that familiar with like you know i watched it as a yeah. kid uh but i only remember you know a handful of characters that i identified with like rogue and gambit <laughs> like i know those but like i don't know who cable is i don't know who any of these other people are like i yeah. know what nightcrawler looks like because he has the look but every time I see him, I'm like, oh, who's the blue one? You know, I don't remember these things. Or right. Black or whatever color he is. Uh, so. He was great in that movie. X2, yeah. that opening scene. Is oh, it was awesome. What a great yeah. opening to a comic mm-hmm. book movie. Mm-hmm. He goes to the White House there. Yeah. But, to, you yeah. know, to, to not have the familiarity, every time I see these episodes, I have to ask myself, did I get everything that happened in this episode? Uh. Because it is so nonstop. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And I... And, and, you know, everyone is gleaning so much of the story and like, wow, you know, they really did justice to this character or that character and to see them interact in this way. And I don't have that um, that insight, I guess. I didn't, yeah, like, context. Yeah, I didn't have the context. So for me, I'm like, I just watched the episode, but I don't think I watched the same one as everyone because I sure. don't understand that connection. So I rewatch it and I think, oh, I did. I did see the whole mm. thing. It just moves so quick. Yeah. yeah. And that's not a complaint. I, it's it's impressive. Uh but for someone who's new to the franchise, it's um, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Right. Uh, TJ Perry, referring to Buntaro, he's a hammer, and to hammers everything is a nail. Ooh, that's be- is that a is that yeah. a Japanese proverb? Seems like sounds oh, wait, about right. They don't, they don't have hammers. It's maybe I don't know. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What's next, Alan? Well, there's been well, there's CinemaCon this week, which I'm sure. You don't know anything about that. Okay. That, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's offensive. laughs> no. I don't think I talked to you about it because I'm the one who always like throws it in your ear. I try to keep it's it true. out of your ear um, nice. on purpose, uh, There was, which is like a big event for all the theater owners. And they go hang out and they have drinks and they hang out with the uh, the directors, the actors, and they talk about the movies coming out this year. Yeah. Mm, so exciting. it's like a big expo. Um, and you have to you know pay like $2,000 for a ticket to get in there. Um, but... A lot of things came out this week. I tried to pick things that uh, mm. were a little bit more interesting to us, I think, because there's a lot of things where you're like, eh, that's all right. That's great. Um, and I went for something for this first one here. I think that would probably be up our alley uh, was, oh, wow, went right to his head. We have Edgar Wright here because it sounds mm. like he's going to be making a remake of The Running Man 
1980. Ooh. I don't know what year in the 80s. Uh, uh, a classic that I have yet to show you, and I feel bad I have not shown you that. No. Uh, I am again a terrible husband. And, and I would I remind you that. if I could just get all the titles straight. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking earlier about how many different running titles there are. Right? There is Marathon a Man. Man. Yeah, Marathon yeah. Man, yeah. yeah. Uh, Something Man, yeah, always. Something Man as well is, is <laughs> yeah, very man, much in men the... Men in Motion. Mm-hmm. Men in Motion. motion. <laughs> That's good. Um, but I think it's great because uh, this it took me by surprise. I was like, wow, Edgar Wright doing this? Like, you know, he's usually done his, his own thing. I, besides Scott Pilgrim, I, everything else has been pretty much his own thing. Right. Um, and so this is interesting. He's, yeah. And he's going to take this on. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I, I'm a huge, I think all of us have kind of grown up to love him for all the things he's done with Shaun of the Dead. And Hot Fuzz is my favorite because I'm in the cop movies. That's great. My, for me. You're not a big um, fan of Scott Pilgrim, though. Scott Pilgrim, I enjoyed. Um, mm-hmm. I, I read the comic series before that, actually. It was one of my first graphic novel things when I was in school. And I really loved it. And then I saw the movie and I enjoyed it. It just, uh, something about that, that, that that book really got me and i don't know why i didn't connect with it It was just a weird time in my life but i didn't fall in love with it like i'd say most did at that time but uh it was but also yeah. truncated it was a truncated version it was of the graphic it was novels. a really cut down um but it was cool it's fun the editing again he's the best yeah. editor i've ever seen uh, I, I mean i reference him anytime i'm talking to someone else about editing i'm like look at his stuff look at this scene look at that scene uh the just the speed at which he edits like even i have like a gif here just this sort yeah. of editing style is something brilliant. that the, the camera zooms that the, it's it's like ash evil dead you know getting ready mm. to get better right uh he took that and he just improved upon it on everything he does so um i'm a big fan of him yeah, uh, in origi- general original ant-man i didn't realize he was behind planet terror or grindhouse oh did he help with grindhouse he yeah. probably did oh a i didn't know i think he did a trailer one of those little grindhouse oh. trailers oh he that's did fun one of them i'm not sure which one he did uh, it was Planet Terror. Was it Planet Terror? Oh, yeah. he, that the movie, oh, wow. well, that was direct. That's the movie. That was Robert Robert Rodriguez directed uh, Planet Terror. Yeah, but maybe he did movies. like one of the trailers. Maybe, in, um, yeah. Yeah. In that. I didn't know. Credit isn't clear here, but. Okay. But in the, so anyways, I was just going to say that they actually announced someone who's starring in it already, which mm-hmm. is Glenn Powell, which seems to be the new oh. it guy. Rising uh, Star. Our Twister man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the new Twister guy. Oh, that's so, right. He's in the new Twister. He's the new Twister, which yeah. I actually oh. think he fits pretty well in that. When, the, when yeah. I saw that scene, I was like, he, he feels like he's in that world. It's someone I'd see in uh, the Midwest. Sure. Um, he, he was my well, favorite thing about the trailer. Yeah, he was yeah. too. Yeah, he had the attitude. Like, yep. he's kind of a mix of Bill Paxton mixed with the villain, actually. Yes. Mm. Sort of both, right? He's a little bit of both, which I liked. I thought he was going to be the son of the, uh, not Bill Paxton, but of the other guy that got killed. Oh, the thing Carrie Elwes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but yeah, so they already announced yeah. this guy. And uh, I actually could see it working. Um, what do you think, Chris? Uh, curious on your thoughts. Uh, you know, I've, I, I've, I've seen Running Man again recently, actually. And uh, it's it's a fun movie for people that need like any uh, like context for it. It's uh, it's actually uh, based on a Stephen King sh- short story, um, and it was of course it was adapted starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, very different from the original short story. Um, it, it, you know, more outrageous and kind of over the top and, and and stuff. But it's like basically it's a dystopian futuristic society where so many people gravitate, you know, to you know uh, this TV show, The Running Man, which is basically a game show, except people die <laughs> you know as, as the right. contestants yeah they use like prisoners you know to, to compete against each other and things and these gladiatorial matches and sometimes it's like you know racing sometimes it's just you know in these different arenas it's really cool and it's it's a it's a it's a fun movie you know arnold schwarzenegger's got some crazy you know one-liners in, in the film as he often does but uh but yeah i you know edgar wright wouldn't be like the person i would think of to do the another adaptation of it and so i'm curious if it's going to be more reminiscent to the original stephen king's short story which is much more serious or um more like the movie so i'm curious but i think his editing would be perfect for it right. i think that'd be great in a, especially in a dystopian you know near future setting i think that would be really cool because we haven't really seen that from him yet so i'd like that yeah i think he would do great the thing i think he's gonna do the best with is the villains because the one mm. thing i love about uh running man is all the fun characters that they that he meets like say yeah she Vin- jesse ventura oh my god the, yeah the workout man <laughs> yeah uh, she hasn't seen this she's gonna love this movie i really need to show I it to her this already. It's, it's super over the top yeah i think no, what's great. his name mr fantastic or something like that he yeah he did like, like, goofy names like that yeah yeah mr so this, amazing or whatever yeah, mr amazing you know, or something like, like that. that uh or like there's this guy with a he has a blowtorch Nice. Uh, I think this is a uh, yeah, the, the wrestler or boxer. What's his name? This is Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Yeah, he was in Mars Attacks and all those fun other movies. Like kind of an yeah. athlete turned actor. Yeah, football uh, player. Yeah, he's, he's in a, he's a the Dirty guy. Dozen. Yeah, yeah he's like dozen. his flame name. You you have Sub Zero. 
Yeah, you know who's in the movie? This guy, uh, Mr. Mrs. Upper guy. guy. Yeah. Oh, that, Jim Brown's name was Fireball, by the way. Oh, Fireball. Fireball. Yeah. Fireball. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, this guy sings opera as he drives a car. Amazing. Uh, and he has electric power. Like electrical... He has electric powers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that vest lights up. It yep. does. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, couldn't got, I couldn't find a shot of Christmas that tree. Uh, here's the guy with the <laughs> chainsaw, oh which he does have safety glasses, which is That's wonderful. Good. I love mm-hmm. that he, he thought of that. Uh, doesn't help him. <laughs> it doesn't help at all. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many good villains. In, oh, geez, I went too far. Oh, I put this up because I was like, remember the there's a oh, game wow. when I was growing up called Smash TV, which is pretty much huh. this. Yeah. Uh, they made it into a game, and I played it all the time on the NES, and I was curious if anyone else was into that this game like, like me. This looks like Sock'em Boppers. No, no, no. It does, doesn't it? has a color. Yeah, yeah, like a kid's it definitely, yeah. game. Rock like Hungry, Hungry Hippos or something. Uh, but yeah, no, that this was a fun game. It was like a top-down, and you'd go into different rooms. Like, you'd move in. You have to like go through these little traps. You're not going to kill. Go to the next room. Nice. It's very much based off that. They also made another game called Fusion Frenzy a little later in the Xbox Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I know Fusion. I played, I played that. Yeah, that was a good Xbox game. There was just mm-hmm. a lot of, like, this, this idea of a, a live televised show where yep. people are, like, going for the you know their lives uh, is... is it's a fun thing to do, and I'm I'm actually super excited for this, which I was surprised. I was like, whoa, I really want to see this. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I got to show you the movie. I feel bad. The <laughs> only thing that gives me pause is: has there ever been a good remake of an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Ooh, Oof, you know, because I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think like you know because obviously that didn't happen with Total Recall, you know, right. which we 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 were expressing our love for off mic uh, before. Because so I'm trying to think like I don't know if there's ever been like a really good remake of like one of his. Conan, not Conan. No, not Conan. Not Conan. Conan Although either. Conan 2 was great. Mm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. If you disagree, you're wrong. It has, it has some so moments fun. I like. It has some moments I like. I like the aesthetic. Yeah. The aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. That's a good point. Yeah. I, that is something to be a little bit kind of like. That's it. But maybe this is the one. This That's is the, the guy. I, I trust this yeah. guy. I love it. I, I didn't see the last movie we did. What was uh, Soho? Last night Soho. I did not. I don't know why I haven't seen that one. I, I just, for some reason, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't feel like it was that fun that he usually has. It's not. It's not a comedy. Okay. It has maybe a couple comedic moments, but it's more of like a, an Italian horror film. Okay. It's like one of those, a Jalo movie or something like that. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I, I have I, the last movie of his that I did love was Scott Pilgrim versus the World. I love yes. Shaun the Dead. I love Hot Fuzz, and then obviously Scott Pilgrim. But then I was not a fan of World's End. I just mm-hmm. there's something about that movie. I thought it was too mean. I thought it had too many characters. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of Baby Driver. And, yeah, we didn't like Baby Driver. Um, nah. Did he do the first one too, or just the second one? There's only one Baby Driver. Wait, There's only no. one Baby Driver. There's yeah, no. Are you sure? You might yep. think of another movie with a baby, like Gone Baby, or something, or mm-hmm. another baby, Baby's Day it Out. Might be a similar titled oh, I love movie. Baby's Day Out. Baby's Day Out's a great movie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a prequel. <laughs> it's a prequel. <laughs> yeah. It's really uh, I, although I did, I did like Last Night in Soho. I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. So yeah, yeah I'm curious. I'm curious what this was one. So I, I I'm excited. So we'll we'll, yeah. we'll watch it. We'll try maybe we'll watch that tonight. Maybe we'll, we'll mm. do a Running Man. Give it a That'd shot. That'd be a good one. Take a gummy and go through that. Hell yeah, yeah. Do I take a gummy for that? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. 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 You should okay. live tweet that. Make it one. better. I'm curious what you think about it. I would love Definitely. to do watch along parties with the two of you. I think that would be, be fun, fun actually. I would you know, be all take for some it. gummies and do it. Yeah, especially if we do like uh, we should watch. We should do commentary on the Kurt Russell and. Um, do commentary on the commentary. Do commentary, commentary on the commentary. commentary. Oh, that sounds great. I'm sure that's not John Carpenter at all. and Kurt Russell's commentaries. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'd Sold. be, I'd be, I would love to do. Yeah, those kind of classic movies. Right. That'd be super fun. We'll put it on Patreon. Everyone subscribe. Thing. Oh shit! Yeah, that'd be <laughs> nice. great. Yeah, do that. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, yeah. So that's that's one fun thing that came out of yeah. Ca- CinemaCon. Uh, I don't know what company does they have Paramount, Disney. They all have their own little things. Um, oh, I know. But this is not many. that. I'm going to a different, totally different thing because I, I saw this uh, yesterday. Uh, there's an article saying that uh, Francis Ford Coppola's new movie Megalopolis mm. uh, is having some hard times uh, finding its audience or like how where they're going to produce, uh, you know, put it on streaming and theaters. Distribute it. Um, distribute it. They just don't. They don't know what this is. They look at it. They go, "Okay, what did you do with this?" Um, uh, maybe they need some of his wine to really get through it. You know, that's, that's yeah, they um, might. Too bad. Maybe he's called it off the bottle. To make the movie. <laughs> can, can you can you rattle off the names of the cast? Because like, wow. Well, what go a for spread. it. Go for it. Say the names. I don't have my. Well, idea I actually right don't know who Grace Vanderwall is. Sounds great. That name sounds great, though. Sounds great. Yeah, Vander Wall. Uh, but like the that. people I do know, it has Shia LaBeouf, Adam mm-hmm. Driver. Mm-hmm. Natalie Emmanuel, which is uh, the translator from Game of Thrones, Aubrey Plaza, Jean Carlo Esposito, Zendaya, 
John Voight. I mean, the list goes on. Here's Dustin Sheila Hoffman. Bell. Here you go. Look at it. He's looking great. Oh, stop it. Is that him <laughs> in Megalopolis? Shut yes. the fuck up. He's Fabulous. looking great. I have those shoes. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, hard to put on. Yeah. Yeah. Tr- t- tell me about it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he looks great. He looks great in Drake. I think he's kicking butt there. He's yeah. good in everything. Yeah, he's true. He's he's a good looking yeah. man. Um, <laughs> and this looks like Star Wars to me. Oh I'm just my. Gonna, gonna Star Wars vibe a little bit. What a very look. Roman look. Very yeah. Roman. Yes. Look, right. Very. Modern so really, Roman all the photos I can find, I, I was just trying to find some were just you know people snapping some you know right. set stuff. But uh, my goodness. Behind the looking, scenes. What a great actor. I love that guy. Um, That's Adam Driver. Driver? Yeah. yeah, that's Adam Driver. How has yeah. he aged this way? He looks He looks the same. He's got makeup on him. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks so natural. I mean, there's no mm. way the, the man in this shot is 40. Uh, but... He's putting his neck down. You get the neck Yeah, he's got, uh, he's got some jowl. You can get your neck. Anyone can. Us. Even yeah. skinny guys, we can get <laughs> neck jowls. Yeah, exactly. Go you got the jowls. Yeah, yeah you can do it. Yeah. Um, I can't. <laughs> but I think the question I was, I was curious about was like, you know, uh, you know, it's I like when a filmmaker just goes goes for it, right? They just... He's, he spent all his money on this. Like, he used his own yeah. money to make this film, by the way. So he, like, I don't know how many vineyards he sold, but he, he, he did enough to make this film and get this cast. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously he's a he's a legend. You know, we, we got we got the Godfather, uh, all the Godfathers. Uh, um, this is my favorite scene in Godfather 2. Oh, uh, poor Fredo. Was, yes. I never I'm wanted smiling. to go fishing after that my dad after I saw that. Oh, uh, that's right. Um, <laughs> the, oh, you know, Godfather, obviously. Oh. Yeah. Apocalypse Now, which is sort of kind of interesting because that had a very – that's known for being in uh, a tough shoot. Uh, it was insane. <laughs> it was oh, insane. It was yeah, and there was a behind-the-scenes of his wife, I, I believe, I filmed. I was watching an interview uh, yeah. with him, and he Our was darkness. like – I can't believe I did this movie. No one wanted <laughs> yeah. to do it. They said it was too expensive. I funded it myself, which you should not do. And we fucking did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and there's wow. some great shots in this movie. I mean, it's some of the most cinematic shots. Like I remember there's like a ceiling fan from a helicopter mm-hmm. blade to a ceiling fan of Martin Sheen looking up and saying, Transition. You know, it's tough. It changes you as a man. You know, that type of thing. And yeah. I, I, it stuck with me. I was like, wow, film could be, you know, I saw it in film school and I was like, whoa, wow, this is art, you know? So, I think it's important that we have films like this, right? We need someone pushing it, not just making something that, yes, we'll check all the boxes and we'll have people run into the theaters and say, good job, yay, we love mm-hmm. you, you hit everything. We need people to push it and take a big swing. And uh, it's just weird that all the all the things I'm hearing is people on the internet is like, oh, God, it's probably a failure, it's so bad, it's terrible. But at the same time, like this dude put his own money in to make this. Uh, he's a legend. Give him a shot, you know? Uh, I think he deserves to do this. And if it's bad, it's bad. Let's judge it off what it is. But um, I don't know. I'm actually excited to see it, good or bad, because he hasn't mm. made something. When's the last time we've seen a Francis Ford Coppola film, right? Um, for well, a long time. Is, is Megalopolis built on some like literary staple? Because Apocalypse Now, huge, right? Because mm. that's based on... Um... Was it a book? Heart of Darkness. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. the first like uh, <laughs> it was the first uh, unreliable narrator book ever written. Uh, uh, so okay. that's that's huge. Um, every every English major must read it. Uh, yeah. So there's that. He also have like Bram Stoker's Dracula, Ooh. right? And I feel like I all like the that. ones where he makes his film about some like big uh, pivotal moment in like literary literary history has become mm-hmm. you know he's he's so passionate about it you can see it in the movie mm-hmm. i don't know if megalopolis is gonna be one of those That's i don't know question. what it's about i just know that he's been trying to make this movie for well over 20 years oh, wow he's been trying to get it together i think uh, since the 90s i want to say Damn. um I i i don't know if this is based off of anything i, I all i know is that it takes place in uh, a society like a utopian society that had a major disaster that destroyed it and you have these competing uh figures within the society itself uh that that want to create it in their own image or they want to you know build it this way or that way and it's about this disagreement and i guess you have these different sides that are opposed to each other and that creates like a conflict of sorts that's based on what the description i think that he's put out there i don't know if there's there's probably more details as far as i know and they probably have like who each actor's playing and what side they represent but Mm. i don't know my i am not really looking forward to this to be honest and it's just because i what has francis ford coppola made in the last 35 years i'll I'll go 40 years that has been good you know i Mm. think it's been i mean we all give him a enormous credit for making obviously the godfather godfather part two i think godfather part two is even better than godfather part one and like apocalypse Mm. now but 
He made he's made a lot of bad. He's made a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, you know, he did. He did. He did. And then he put her in Godfather Part Three. We saw what happened with that. She's a much better filmmaker than she is an actress. But, she um, is. She's great. I, you know, I don't know. Um, it's been a while. The last movie I saw of him was uh, Youth Without Youth, and I thought that was terrible. That was from the two thousands with uh, Tim Roth. No one did. Yeah, no one does. Okay. <laughs> Tim Roth, though. I mean, I'm, I'm always for a Tim Roth. He's I mean, a great actor. Two thousand seven. Um, yeah, two thousand seven. Oh, so that. right know, after he did Marie Antoinette, starring Kirsten Dunst, who which we were just his daughter about directed. Yeah, yeah right. She was, right, so she directed right, that. Yeah, she directed oh, that I one. See. Sophia Coppola. But yeah. I don't know, man. I just the, hearing all these things and how people are saying it's just really weird and it's ponderous and slow. And I'm just like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think everyone's vision should be seen. But, you know, it's also a business. It is a business. And, and you know, these if these companies feel like because he wants like a, a hundred million dollar campaign for the movie. Oh, does Marketing he? I didn't campaign. hear that. That's, that's, that's part okay, of it. I did not hear that. He's like, if you're going to distribute a movie, you got to you got to have it for a hundred million dollar campaign. So these are like, fuck oh. no. You know, <laughs> no, then no, fuck that. You're crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know, but the thing is, like, he comes from that same era as Scorsese. He comes from that same uh -huh. era as a lot of these revolutionary. I mean, even you know Spielberg and Lucas, who you know also innovated upon the industry itself. There's no question, but the industry has since changed, and um, their mindset has not. And so I feel like what's probably going to happen with this movie, it's going to go straight in service. They're gonna someone's gonna pick it up a Netflix or maybe an Amazon. They'll put it on there, but maybe have a small theatrical debut because he wants everything with it. I'm just I, can't I don't see know if that's possible. Running the theaters for that one to tell you no, no, yeah. no. Similar to the, what was the what was the Scorsese one that just came out? The one the Killers of the Flower Moon. You know, I don't think that did that well. In no, it bombed. And it's Scorsese. You mm -hmm. know, like that's it's like a, something that we usually have people just like we got to see it. It's the latest thing, but no one saw it. And I think yeah. it's on Apple. Uh, just got to Apple. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Apple. It's on streaming. I'm curious if anyone's watching. I showed her it. She was like, eh. Yeah. You know? I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. I There's things I liked about that movie, yeah. but I don't think it's one of his. I mean, I guess I, I prefer it over The Irishman and Silence. Me too. But yeah. uh, it's nowhere near as good as something like Wolf of Wall Street, which I personally which love. Last you know? good one, so, yeah. For yeah, sure. my opinion. So. Tim Morrill says, I saw Youth Without Youth. It was a bit weird, but not as weird as Tetro or Twixt. I've not seen those, I which was those. his other movies. Huh. So I don't know. Yeah, Twixt. 2011. Twixt. Oh, is a, uh, okay. I recognize a little bit of this. It looks like it's about vampires or something. Oh, no, man loves vampires. Hey, he does, what? clearly. What? I love Bram Stoker. I will say it. It is a bad movie. Okay, times. thank you. I love but, it. But yeah, you're right. It's not good. There are some awesome things in that movie. That <laughs> there is. And, and, uh, Gary Oldman being the, uh, the primary. The, uh, the costume design it. is some of the coolest stuff I've ever oh. seen in my life. I love that yeah. movie. We own it on 4K. <laughs> Uh, oh sure and, uh, yeah you can almost see like the paper cutouts of the moon yeah <laughs> oh wow okay. like in game in camera in game in camera type effects where they're actually you know layering things and making it right like, the, using perspective things like they're doing old school techniques just to it's like oh god they really loved what they're doing in this and it shows and too bad it's just not a good movie the production but, design in that movie i agree with you is gorgeous it's like this looks great i love the look of this but there's just so there's there's just a lot of stuff that's just goofy as fuck. <laughs> well, there's a werewolf having sex with a girl on a yeah on a stone. Well, there's you know, that, yeah, yeah. But like Keanu Reeves, I'm just like oh, you are in the wrong oh, film. That's sir. the wrong choice. <laughs> yeah. He is so Bill and Ted in that. I'm like, he what is. Are you he has the voice and everything. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. Go no. Dracula. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> like, oh my god. god. My wife. No. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Robert I also like when Anthony Hopkins teleports throughout that movie. It's like, what the? That's what, right. what are That's you, right. dude? I know Van you're Helsing Van Helsing. Yeah. I know you're a monster hunter, but what the hell's going on here? <laughs> oh, man. Interesting choice for what Van Helsing. Oh, yeah. oh, man. We got someone in the chat who met John Carpenter twice. What? Wow. We I hope he was cool, Robert. We were talking about him off stream, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I got rejected by John so Carpenter. Sure. That's my one What do you story. mean? What? Was, was, <laughs> yeah, I was... He was doing that concert I was just talking to you about when I went to go oh. see him live. Uh -huh. I, I sent him, uh, they were looking for photographers. I sent him my portfolio oh. and he's like, he's like these are, I guess it was from him, I guess he sent. He said, these wow. are great photos, but I already got, you know, I got a guy. Oh, and I was see, like, he didn't oh, think you weren't good enough. Yeah. yeah. And I also emailed Neil guy. Breen that day too, uh, oh. the Faithful Findings guy, oh. uh, <laughs> to do some work with him. Oh, my favorite. And he never responded. Oh, so I get it from John Carpenter, but I don't get it from Neil Breen. John's a classy yeah, well, guy. That's why. I, I was guess gonna so. say, Neil Breen is a huge. He's pretty so big. He's too big. Yeah. Big yeah. I think I didn't show him stock photography was what he wanted to see. Mm. Uh, that's <laughs> what he was looking for. Yeah, no, yeah he, oh, he loves that. <laughs> that's his favorite type of photography. <laughs> just stock photos. But, you know, yeah. Chris, we actually went to go see, uh, what's, the, what's the new one called? Oh, Twin. A pair, a deadly pair or something. A pair. I don't know what mm. it was. He's, the names are, do they matter anymore? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yes. Okay. A twisted pair. Kay I think a twisted pair. the tortured crossing. Okay. Oh, that's totally wrong. Wow, you're completely off. Jeez, but I was yeah. off. <laughs> you're thinking about the other one, I think. The one okay. Uh, yeah. So we saw Kay the tortured crossing in a, uh, a theater. Yeah. A, we went to a theater to see that. Mm -hmm. yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking terrible. It was, all, it was right. all done with stock photography. Everything was stock. Oh, oh green oh, screen. No. But stock. someone animated Ooh. that tiger. There was a 3D tiger. He usually puts tiger. a video of a tiger and green screens himself next to it. This one oh, was nice. a 3D, badly 3D tiger. It looked like a PS1 oh, level man. tiger. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> nice little charm. That's great. That's great. Anyway, cool. That, that should be one we should watch together sometime. But yeah, to circle back, Glenn Powell, great choice. Yeah, great right. choice. Oh, yeah, Glenn yeah, Powell. Yeah, yeah, Running Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're, okay. No, um, we're on Megalop. Let's talk about Megalop. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Well, speaking of other directors that have a, a classic... Uh, film repertoire let's go mm -hmm. to Zack snyder because i love talking about him i think he's a nice guy by the way i'm always going to start that because okay. i think he's a, a nice dude because I, I think i saw something on twitter where he was promoting rebel moon and he was actually like letting fans come in and he would direct them mm -hmm. and take pictures and and i thought that was really cool i've never seen a director just do that for a fan thing um anyways he's a nice guy but let's talk about his films because it looks like he's talking about <laughs> Sucker Punch, again, has come oh. back into conversation, which oh I was God. like, really? <laughs> the head shake. I don't want to do it. <laughs> She's like, please kill me. <laughs> but I, I want to do it with Chris here. It's always fun sure. uh, to talk about Zack Snyder. Uh, so, yeah, I guess he was in an interview because Rebel Moon Part 2 Extended Deluxe Edition uh, Ultra Turbo comes out. Uh, is that what it's called? I think, I think it is. Are you for real? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> I think it's coming out this week, maybe, or next week. I next week. Is. Next week, is it? Okay. Yep. Um, and so he was in a press tour and they're asking him about films and what he's done. And he's like, well, he's like, and they're saying like, what, is there one film you, you know, you wish you could revisit or was better? And he's like, oh, Sucker Punch was the one, uh, the one, uh, that he, he wanted to really improve. He felt that there's a lot of footage that he has filmed already, of course, sitting on his hard drive. Uh, and when he says mm -hmm. film, by the way, that doesn't mean it has effects. It doesn't have sound. It doesn't have right. color grade. It's nothing. It's just extra footage just hanging around on his hard drive this man must have hard drives everywhere in his house oh, yeah. for the oh, amount gosh. of films he must have at least 12 laptops that neil Breen could use yeah everything's just sitting around he's like oh and man, new should destroy those <laughs> <laughs> let him let him so loose <laughs> our slayer was like i hope you didn't let him a laptop alan <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyways he says he wants to go back and add some footage and he uh, he'll make it better because I guess there was a director's cut already that he was not yep. involved in that just extended it a little bit. But this one would be his, you know, the final director's cut. And he's asking his fans, like, hey, if you guys want to get a campaign going, I am so for this. I want to do it. I don't want him to do it. I'd like to start an anti-campaign against them <laughs> doing their campaign <laughs> yes. to make this uh, if possible. So I, I just wanted to bring this up and see if you guys want to do that with me. Uh, what do you think, Chris? <laughs> I, you know, well, you, people know my opinion on Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. I'm not a fan of him. Outside of a couple of his, like, earlier movies, Dawn of the Dead, Owls of Gahul, 300, I, I just, he, for me, has just gotten worse uh, over time. And I feel like it's because his, his fan base has indulged him and it's called him the blueprint of everything and mm. things. And I think that's made him arrogant and ignorant and not a particularly good filmmaker. And I think that's on display in a lot of recent stuff that he's done. Um, now, I, his whole thing, I just, he needs to let go. Like Sucker Punch, I still I would argue is probably his worst movie, which is yeah. saying so. And that's, <laughs> um, it is it is just there is nothing about that film that I, I like. I think it's nonsensical. I, I the, the themes that it's uh, that it's addressing or trying to address, I think, are vapid. Um, the, the 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 dialogue is 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 atrocious. It's just a I don't know. It's like a it's like a, a teenage boys, you know, uh, anime fantasy. But, you know, and I even hate to compare it to, to anime because there's some wonderful, amazing, well-written mm -hmm. and well-made anime out there. But it just feels like just like a, a frat boys. It's a frat boys idea of an anime. Yes. And, um, yeah, I, I, I hate this movie. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to go back to it. I, is there like... I guess there, there's fans of everything, of course, but is there like a groundswell of support for Sunker Punch? You know, he might want to try to create it, but I don't think it's out there compared to, you know, his DC adaptations or even Rebel Moon, which even Rebel Moon now, no one's talking about part two at all. That thing is just, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy how there's just no hype for it, but yeah. I, I, I don't think there's going to be an initiative to get this going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, don't even I, know what this is. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, it is, it is an assault on the census that's what that movie is yeah oh my god it's such a sounds right up his alley isn't yeah. the setting yeah. it was like these girls in a 
not a brothel or asylum. Something. Oh asylum. no, well, asylum. It's a it is, it's an asylum brothel. <laughs> an asylum brothel. Yes, that's yeah, how it's it, an that it is. Brothel, yes. And oh. whenever they dance, it's, it's the main girl you saw with yeah. the sword, she starts dancing for the guy. She's like, yeah. Mm. She's like, she's like, I hate doing it. And then she goes in her mind yep. to this world where she's a superhero, mm -hmm. and she slays giant you know mechs and fights the nazis yep because that's like every video game at the time oh. at, at that time that was sort of like wolfenstein mm. it just felt like a video game to me maybe I'm just yeah. so, that's my stuff i was into at the moment and i was like god this is so video game i hate it that does um, sound like one step above how animes are all based like they're they're always high school girls yeah and they always yeah, live a double life as like superheroes or mm. vigilantes or whatever you just take those same characters and stick them in the asylum slash brothel that makes yeah. sense that's pretty much it you nailed yeah. it don't they die? Like a lot of them get shot. Spoiler. Oh yeah, a lot of them die. die at the end it doesn't matter. Like it, the movie's over. It's okay. Fifteen years old. Is I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'll spoil edition, they live. Maybe. Oh, whoa. No. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's. It's such a gross movie to me, and it's like he just. Yeah. He also he likes to in a lot of like the original films that he makes, not are based on anything. He likes to include a lot of rape and things. Yeah, like that's like that's like a lot of rape in that movie. There's an attempted rape. Well, yeah, a lot of rape like later on, but there's like an attempted rape that gets the whole plot going by her evil stepfather. It's just like, oh my god, guys, come on, or him, just stop. I don't get it. It's so weird. He's expressing himself. I guess so. Yeah, it's what he thinks is cool, and I don't like edgy. Yeah, and I have friends. I remember when that trailer came out, they were sending it to me, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm gonna talk to you anymore. I was like, that's kind of what happened. I see what happened. And that's what happened. Mm. Sucker punch. <laughs> that went my whole friendship. So everyone. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Tim says uh, Snyder is now using the Justice League Snyder Cut playbook for every movie. Yep. Yep. That's what it seems to be. That's... I don't like that. I and he's he's it's it's creating this like uh, it's like the Rubble Moon. Like there was no excuse to create like uh, an extent a Snyder Cut of Rubble Moon. Just release the whole movie. Just on Netflix, like why? Are we, and, and I think they did that so they could drum up support and fervor for the film and to get yeah. people to watch it. I think it, it it didn't come from a natural place. And I don't want him to do this. And, he, and now he's leaning into that. And I'm just like, come on, dude, just just move on. Yeah. Just Has just anyone been on the internet like I can't. Yes, excited. I haven't seen anyone be excited for that. By the way, no, outside of his fan base, yeah. which it's now dwindling. I think it's so but, small. Uh, it was already small to begin with. Yeah, you know, it's such a small. I don't know, man. I just I'm not. I don't want to keep picking on him, but you know, it's just it's just not my yeah, style. You do. No. Well, you know, I guess I do. But yeah, I just think we need to move on and you know, when directors release something, sometimes you just gotta let it go and let's yeah. you know, we had you know, Lucas does it too, he, he plays with stuff, so does Spielberg. You know, he's not them. <laughs> let's move on. No, um, so let let us move on to something we are excited about. <laughs> yeah, let's do, that. Let's do, that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. And Go for it, Lana. You, you take this Me? one. Me? Yeah. Oh, you know well, I is. was more impressed with how much you're excited. Oh, hell yeah. For <laughs> Maxine fucking Minx. <laughs> oh, my God. I am so hyped. I've been waiting for years for this culmination of the trilogy. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I loved X. I yep. love slashers in general, but I, you know, it was funny because when we first started the movie X, I was like, are those people in old people makeup? Why? I didn't mm. understand it. I wasn't familiar with Mia Goth. I didn't know anything about anything. And it was a good movie on its own. I thought it was fun. It wasn't like a mind-blowing slasher. It's not like, you know, one for the ages. Like, oh, remember, you know, one of the best slashers of all time. X. It wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. But to continue on her story and start going back in time and doing the backstory of how this old woman became this monster. Yeah. Basically. And to show not just who she was, but like the environment that was that she grew up in the entertainment industry and all these different generations um and you know it's far reaches into like rural america it's all very interesting yeah uh so you know pearl was excellent it even had like that technicolor feel which i loved uh and so maxine breaking into the adult film industry mm -hmm. after i've just seen boogie nights for the first time i am like oh super wow excited. i know <laughs> yeah. nice yeah, yeah, so we saw the Maxine trailer. Chris, what did you think? Oh, I loved it. Like you, I was a huge fan of X and Pearl. Those were such surprises the year they yes. came out. And um, I was very, very excited for the third chapter in this and where, you know, each movie was like, you know, paying homage to something like, you know, the the. X was homage to 70s kind of like backwood slashers like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. Pearl was like Technicolor movies of the, you know, the, the 40s and 50s, despite it's like 1910 setting, mm -hmm. uh, but it had that look. And now Maxine is going to be an homage to 80s 
slasher films, you know, which is horror movies. And it's cool because like in the trailer itself, we see all these different sets from like when they were doing yeah. Psycho 2 around this time. So I wouldn't be shocked that that's going to be actually a part of the film's narrative, you know, which right. I think is awesome. And they're Doesn't using the real world. To the Bates Motel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they were they they brought back like Anthony Perkins to do like Psycho two like around I think the setting of the movie, mm -hmm. and so it makes sense. Maybe she's like uh, there to try out for a role in the film. So and the, oh. all these sets are still there, I think, to this day. Even no it's like, pretty awesome. Psycho yeah. Oh, Psycho yeah, two is it's, excellent. It's, it's good. It's yeah. it's actually it's uh, it gets a lot of shit, but it's it's good. It's yeah, it is a good sequel. Yeah, yeah um, it's big time. And it's using the real world stuff of the of the Night Stalker. You know, who was an actual serial killer you know, uh, yeah. during that time period. You know, so I think something I didn't awesome. expect. It was really when, you know, the trailer came out and people started getting like, you know, uh, screenshots of, you know, the Bates motel and the similarities, mm. you know, like the mom in the window and like her seeing the person in the window, all that stuff. I had no idea that Maxine was going to be pulling on like the stalker timeline basically, yeah. right? Like the night stalker. I had no idea that was going to be incorporated. And I think that's an interesting twist because it could have been great without that. Uh, but it's mm -hmm. more ambitious to have that. And I'm, I'm very curious to see how they execute it. Oh, I agree with you with the ambitiousness. You can tell, like, I mean, not that, like, X or Pearl look cheap or anything. They look mm -hmm. great. But you can tell this he has even more money because of how <laughs> well those films perform. You're just more locations. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's awesome. It makes it feel more. And it's just the other thing about this movie. It looks like it. Uh, it, it, it smells like it stinks. Because it's the yeah, 80s, it's dirty. It's and it's dirt. dirty, it's grimy, yep. everyone it's smells like cigarettes, say, you know, yeah, uh, nice. B.O. It's just like, yeah, it's the 80s in Hollywood. It's everything yeah. scummy. Wow. It reminded me of a Grand cool. Theft Auto trailer. That was mm. what I was, I was thinking. Mm. Uh, I can see that. The, the editing and the sound use of music was so well done. I think I messaged Lana right after I saw it. That's one of the best edited trailers I've seen in a while. Mm. Uh, not just because it's the 80s and I love that stuff because I've, I've kind of got grown tired of that. Uh, aesthetic but this made me excited because I, I guess her is what makes that trailer so good her attitude like i'm yep. fucking you know i'm maxine yeah that, that's so that, she's such an interesting character already You're she's like star. grabbing a gun mm -hmm. she's like she's doing, there's just so many things about this that gets me excited and kevin bacon we got in there yeah I was just looking through some of those pictures you got kevin bacon you got uh, esposito <laughs> you got uh, yeah. the, the uh, michelle mon was it mon monahue is that her name? The girl from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I really like her. Oh, cool. Uh, she's one of the cops that looks like they're they're trying to find out the backstory, like yeah. of where she's from. Michelle Monaghan. Yeah, yeah. So she's really great. Um, and nice. they're trying to figure out her backstory. And then you got Kevin Bacon, who's like this other thing. There's Detective. so many different things going on in this trailer, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that are fun. And then the VHS stuff, seeing like a knife kill someone and blood splatters over across the VHS tapes. Sold. I'm Fred in. Look. You know, you got all the stuff I love. So. Um, I'm super excited for that. That was even better than I thought. I know we were talked about this. I think we talked about this like a couple weeks ago. And we're like, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I was even, after I saw that, I was like, yeah, we gotta go see that like the, day one. The cast, the female cast is really interesting in this. Um, and I, I knew I recognized them, but I didn't realize who they were. Lily Collins is oh. Emily in Paris. Oh. Uh, Paris. Yeah, Emily Paris. My mom is keeps trying to force me to watch, but it's That's so right. feels That's good. And I just, it's like the epitome of like a fucking awful American living abroad. It just makes me <laughs> fucking sick. Uh, but, <laughs> but Halsey is in it, which is really interesting. I don't think I don't know if she's had any um, acting gigs before this. this Who is be, Halsey, by the way? I don't. I've heard a, that name. She's a recording artist. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, and she's fantastic mm. um yeah so her birthday's the day after mine nice <laughs> different years we don't have to talk about it I mean, <laughs> um yeah and then elizabeth uh debecky De oh yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so she's from like yeah guardians of the galaxy the great yep. gatsby okay. uh tenet you know so it's an interesting variety of, and i'm sure they're going to be what like showgirls in the film oh, and yeah. Yeah. dead bodies at some point probably definitely uh, so yeah so i'm excited i think i saw some dead i'm bodies excited there, to yeah. see lily collins mm -hmm. did <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, but yeah, but no, there were there were little things that uh, that I you know would not have thought of that people were pulling out on Twitter about Maxine. Mm. Um, as far as you know, uh, callbacks to the earlier films, right? Because you know, in Pearl, not Pearl, in X, uh, you know, when they're really old, she's talking to her husband, and she's you know, uh, Maxine is really jealous, right? That the husband seems mm. to be taking an interest in these young people, mm. and at some point, the husband says, "You know, I don't like blondes." And at the at the time, it's very uh, I mean, it, it's not very impactful until you go back and now you see Maxine's story that she is a blonde. She's mm. like the blonde bombshell and all of that stuff. All these little things play into her, you know, her long term arc of becoming so toxic and murderous yep. and all that stuff. So 
Very exciting. Yeah. Did Agreed. Mia Goth yeah. help Can't write wait. this too? Very like exciting. I think she helped write Pearl. So I think she, she I think she's a producer on the movie as well. Oh, so is she? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you she's really invested, she's in, invested this. in this. Yep. Like, she's invested in this. This is her jam. Yeah, she's she's into 100%. it. hundred percent like it. Mia Goth's lack of eyebrows in this unsettles me. Good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. good. Yeah. That's what makes her <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Makes it work for her character. <laughs> Isn't she married to Shia LaBeouf or she was they have a kid together? Oh was? Oh. Oh yeah, they it was not very long, I don't think. They split but they they split a long time ago, I believe. Oh man. Oh, wow. He took the eyebrows. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the divorce. And, hey, and she made it work for her. And the dresses and the He's shoes using it. as well. He's yeah, using yeah. all the clothes right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, it sounds like we're hyped for that. So Yeah, great. Can't, Can't wait. wait. X was pretty good. It was an interesting emotional twist I didn't expect. You haven't seen Pearl yet, Tim? You got to oh, get on yeah, it. Yeah, you got to get on it. Excellent. It's so good. Better than X, even. Yeah, I, it's a different type of film. It's, yeah, it's not comfortable, yeah. really, yeah. but... But it it's a very better good. film, I think. Yeah, um, agree. Uh, so again, another trailer that came out uh, that we knew was ha happening uh, is the uh, the Joker. Joker two it finally came out. We saw this poster last week. We were talking about well, it. Yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. We, we were like, we we're kind of. I think we were all middle of the road for this. Maybe yeah. Lana liked it a little bit more. She was like, yeah, I'm more excited for this. Well, uh, you know, I never saw A Star Is Born, but I I love Lady mm. Gaga. I believe in musicals, especially if they don't have the exact same like cadence and formula of uh, of all the Hamilton stuff that we've been seeing for the last like ten years. I'm done rap. with that. It's great. Yeah. It's good. It works, but it's all the same. Like you know exactly how it's gonna sound. And for mm. this, it's kind of the mystery for me. Like I just wonder how they're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. But we talked about that a yeah. little bit, right? Like if it's going to be a Moulin Rougey type thing where they pull from different genres and kind of make it its own thing, then that's going to be great. And that's what I'm expecting at this point. So Yeah. And Chris but. has a background knowing the comics very well. He knows these characters. You know, I, like I, I do. Well, that's the thing that's interesting about this. It's, you know, because I liked uh, the first Joker film. I didn't love it. I liked it a lot. I thought Joaquin Phoenix is very good. Very different take on the Joker, which there have been, you know, adaptations, interpretations, of course. And that's and that's fine. And I like the idea of, of the Joker film where, yeah, do more movies at this where we're being very experimental with these DC characters and they're separate from a shared universe. I think that's great. Um you know, with this, ever since I heard it was a musical, I was like, that's weird. That's a very, okay, that's a risky thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were saying how well, it's going to be a jukebox musical where it's now it's going to be doing cover songs. I was like, I don't know if I would like that. You know, I, I would have preferred, like, if you're going to go a musical, like, do original songs. But with the trailer itself, you know, there is some, like, really cool imagery that I like, especially that last ending shot with the yeah. smile. I was like, that's that. pretty cool. I like that. that. Like, it, it, it visually, there's some really exciting things. They're definitely maintaining the aesthetic of the first film which i think is very good um the one thing that i'm interested though is okay this is clearly a very different take on harley quinn or Har dr harleen quinzel because in the comics she was the joker psychiatrist and he manipulated her and made her fall in love with him and things mm -hmm. so this is a definitely a different take where she seems to be the one that's instigating the relationship where she seems to be like in 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 control at least for however long um and <laughs> you know uh which but which they've also done they've done that before like in a, a telltale video games they did that where she was more the domineering personality um and so that i'm interested just to see that relationship and lady you're correct lady gaga i think is a great actress she was really good in a star is born um but the, it's it to this day and there's some great visual stuff but it's the musical thing that's the thing that's mm -hmm. going to make it or break it i think for a lot of people i think for me i mean if they're just doing 80s pop songs I'm just oh. like, I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't That's think about that know. as an option. I just assumed so. it would be current music, but you're right. Um, yeah. I it could be. That, yeah, it could, it could be. be. I do think that uh, it, it's funny that you would consider potentially that, you know, uh, the jukebox aspect of it would be mm. more risky. I think that doing original music would be more risky than that. Mm. Uh, but I mean, but that mm -hmm. maybe goes with the mentality of why everyone's remaking classic films that work just fine on their own. They're remaking yeah. them because why? Yeah. Uh, but I think for music, it, it sort of works better that way. Like it's a, I, I feel like it's mm -hmm. probably less risky to remake cover songs and just like because you, you hear that all the time, right? Like people, you know, remixing or remaking like cranberry mm -hmm. zombies and making them into like rock songs. And I've heard Little Wayne lollipops as as rock and it's really good. Right. Uh, so I feel like it's actually the safer route. So if they do go the jukebox route, I think that it'll be good. So that actually just makes me more hype. Yeah. 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 I'm curious about this. Uh... So I the the fear I think of a lot of people is like this is all in their heads type of situation, you know, right? Similar to the first film where he had that girlfriend spoiler that was not real. Zazzy beats uh, Zazzy, uh, because right here we have this we're dancing and we're but we're out in real life. Are yep. they out in real life? Are they just in mm. the asylum constantly 
thinking they're out because what I'm getting from the trailer is that he somehow he's rehabilitated. Uh, he thinks right. he is. At least he thinks he gets There's out. There's a trial of some kind. Yeah, some sort of trial. And, you know, all the people are... I don't know. There, there's still people that are following him and they're chasing him. Like there's that him mm-hmm. running on the street there. Uh, the uh, the old dirty New York, which I love. It looks so old and dirty it looks still. Good. It Agreed. looks good. They can really make it dirty. We I wish Ghostbusters would have done that. I know. Um, I knew you were gonna say. I it. know that's gonna be part yes. of a review, probably. Um, yeah. So yeah. So it. it I, I'm curious if they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna do that. I can't see them just redoing the same exact. It's all in their head thing because that'd be. I just. I don't think they're that Too easy. Bad. They wouldn't do that. They're, they're gonna do something really unique i hope um and again i i i did like the first one mm-hmm. it was a little shallow i guess is the word it just wasn't it wasn't it didn't get deep enough as i wanted it to get yeah it just stayed surface level ish um i love the i love the look of it i mean this trailer is like the highest res trailer you can see on the internet i think uh because it's there's something about that the, the bit rate or something and the color grading they have some of the best color grading uh, i usually don't like super saturated colors and stuff but there's sure. something about the, the guy they got filming this, I don't know if it's not Frazier because it's Greg Frazier is the other good one right now, but it must be another guy. But it's there's just something about the look. They they nail the look of this, and it, it's just I just want to see it, right? I don't, I don't even care if it's good, to tell you the truth. I just want to see it. I want to see all the detail on his face. Mm-hmm. I want to see the cool colors, and mm-hmm. that's really just me, the art guy, going, I want to see the cool, pretty pictures. But, uh, it's not too blue for you. It's not too blue. No, I think it, I think it, it's it's a really strong style and it comes yeah. across and they're they're continuing it really well. But it does feel a little samey. If I be the, tell you the truth, it's like I've seen this. I mean, there she's going up the steps. They're going in a crowd again. Yep. They're, yep. You know, mm-hmm. he's running down the street again, being chased. Mm-hmm. I saw that in the first film too. Uh, he's in the asylum. It looks like the same shit in all honesty. Yeah. Uh, but now we have music. And we got the music everything. with it. They know yeah. of a friend. Yeah, right. that's the thing. And, I, I think they said, not to interrupt, I, I know that yeah. they've said that uh, a lot of it is going to take place in their heads. Yeah. They have said that. And you mean, sometimes you won't know, and other times you will know. And, oh, and I'm sure nice. there'll be twists and turns. And I think that most of it's, it's supposed to take place in Arkham. And okay. so maybe the stuff where there are, are, they are outside is in like the final third or something. Gotcha. And then, mm-hmm. and then like when we see them outside, uh, for like the the first two thirds, it'll but it's inside their heads technically. So you'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very unsure about it. Yeah. But. Yeah. I don't like those endings where you just wake up. It was all a dream. Oh, you know, God. those are yeah. the worst endings. We all hate don't, that. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well. All right. Anyways, so that's that's the Joker. Uh, I think yep. it sounds like we're all about the same. I'm Nothing really changed. Fromage. Did you did you watch I'm that trailer? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. Did you see no, the trailer? But you know what? Another oh. another trailer that I didn't see oh, is didn't uh, yeah. Speak no evil. Yeah. So this is an interesting one. I just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I had nothing. I had no idea this was even coming. Have out. you Have uh, you seen this trailer, Chris? I just watched it before we started the show because <laughs> I was like, oh, that's one thing I haven't seen. So I, I did watch yeah. the trailer. Yeah. Let me Got get him. my screen up on what it is uh, here. Uh, yeah. So I guess th- this is actually a remake. Uh, of another film that came out two years ago already. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, really? on Shudder. I read that. I did think it sounded familiar. Okay. Yeah. So, so it came on Shudder. This is the new poster. It looks terrible. That's not a real poster. Here we go. This is the original film. I actually remember this poster. This is a very indie film uh, poster, by the way. It's got this balls. is such a. Well, just the font choice, the, yeah, yeah. the sunset, keeping it minimal. You can't really yeah, read minimalist. The, the, the text. Uh, you know, the smaller <laughs> the logos, the more indie it is, you know? Uh, so, um, but yeah. Uh, I guess this is a good movie, and I, I skipped it. I don't know why, and I think I should see it because it does sound like it's really. There's a lot of high praise for this one. Uh, Isn't this exactly. the one from 2022? This is that 2022. Have you seen it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the one from 2022. I'm saying, oh, but then that posters from that. This film. is the yes. Yeah, so this Got is the it. original, yeah. um, and then this is the new one with our our boy here, James uh, McAvoy. McAvoy, McAvoy, which he's turning into. Jerrell Butler here or something. Yeah, yeah, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's like, just like, is that him? I was like, whoa. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm surprised he never got an, I always thought that guy was going to get an Oscar at some point. He still might, you know, but I just feel like a little earlier in his career because he's so yeah. such a good actor, um, you know, and everything, especially Magneto. He's a great Magneto. A young Magneto. Oh, uh, uh, Charles uh, Xavier. Charles Xavier, that's I'm sorry. Yeah, Charles yeah. Xavier, yeah. So he was really good. Um, You're not going to talk about him playing like 23 different personalities. Oh, in and split, that one? split, and split. He was great in that too. Yeah, he's, mm-hmm. he's a great actor in everything he does. Um, but yeah, so this is a new horror film. It, it's very much a, it's it's a bit typical. I'll tell you right now. When I saw it, it's the the white people going on vacation and they're all and there's many scenes of them eating food together. That's really a lot. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> That's what us uh, middle aged people That's when we go on vacation. Alan. Yeah. <laughs> It's just constant scenes of dinner table, which is sort of its own genre about 10 years ago. Yeah. People having dinner horror, I mm-hmm. called it. Just constantly having dinner, having wine, something happens at the party. 
oh my god type of thing uh even your boy niles is in one of those uh with uh he has, he's the host i think it's called he has, wait what are you talking hmm. about in a, in, in a in horror this? film niles is in a horror oh, i'm saying in the back 10 years ago he made a horror film where he was a killer serious yeah why haven't that. we watched that's cool <laughs> i'll have to show you that that's one but it, awesome. it shows you everyone got into it even niles can you move your cursor it's really oh i'm sorry me. okay <laughs> so you was getting yeah, annoyed so, too just like get this goddamn cursor off my face <laughs> oh, look at him look at him look at him okay make a man so, make a man make here they are they're eating more um yeah and anyways the trailer itself really wasn't that exciting to me i'll tell you right now um i but but the thing about it which was what did get my eyes that I went, okay, look at this. Look how it looks very typical. And then I went like, and I looked at stills of the, the, the old one. And I'm like, wow, this looks so much better. The compositions, like this is a shot from the, well, the original. Know what they're doing. Yeah. And look at the, look at the compositions here compared to what I was just showing you. Like, whoa, whoa. Like look at how they're just taking and dumbing it down. Uh, these using light and shadows like that, mm. that this is the same scene. It looks like of what we just saw McAvoy mm. walking in this room. Was, I'm, I'm guessing this is the same sort of scene. He's come to get him. <laughs> There's a lot more creativity in the lighting, the composition. Yeah. Uh, and then it just brings up the bigger question, why, I guess. Uh, why and, we make it? Why do we, why do we take these things that just came out that were, uh, again, a foreign film, maybe just because many people haven't seen it, so we think we can repackage it and send it to the other people. But I don't know. I, I just wanted to get your, your take on this, Chris, because uh, it's something that kind of annoys me. Sure. Because it, it never makes it better. Um, maybe the, what's the one with the vampire girl? Uh, oh, let me in. Let me in, and they did one right after, which was actually really good in its own way. Uh, it had its own artistic merit that I thought was interesting. Yeah, but it still didn't seem like why did we do this? You know. So. Yeah, you had the you had the original, which was let the right one in, then the remake was called Let Me In, directed yeah. by Matt Reeves. But uh, yeah, here's the thing. Um, you know, I I I think my chat told me about the that they were remaking this, but I hadn't seen like the trailer yet for it, and I was like, oh, it only came out like two years ago. And um, the, the trailer stuff, I'll speak on that. I, I, I was like, I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting because I do like that whole like, all right, you know, family goes to a foreign country and they meet like a bunch of weirdos and they don't know yet. And it's like, that's a cool concept because you're in a foreign environment. You don't know, you know, the language, you know, all those things, even though they speak English here. But um, I, I think they showed the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> I was like, why are you showing me so much stuff? There's a cool reveal of that kid, which you just saw. I was like, oh, my God, that would have been so cool if they actually – if I that was a surprise in the film instead of just putting yeah. it in the trailer. So I think that kind of takes away from oh, – now I know why the kid doesn't talk. And, um, yeah, I think it just – it revealed way too much. I thought they, sh they should have been a little more clever about it, more just like, wait, is, is – like, I think it would have been just better if they just put in a few things where James McAvoy was kind of acting like a little strange. Yeah. More you know, subtle. and then and then yeah. and then, you you know, you have the title See No Evil. It's like, whoa, OK, what's this all about? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think uh, to your point, the reason why they're probably just remaking this in English language is because, you know, it's the you know, which I think it's frustrating. But, you know, you have so many people, especially here in the West and in America, that just don't like to read <laughs> subtitles. And I think it's like, well, you know, we can't. That is such a depressing thing to yeah. hear. Yeah. Yeah, which is which is sad because then that cuts off so many people from seeing so many other amazing movies yeah. from different countries that are great and that are new and innovative, but I think that's why. And so, yeah, I like I was liking the trailer for a bit, but then I thought, well, you kind of spoiled everything for me. I'm sure there's other stuff. I can assume now what's actually, you know, another thing that's going on. But um, yeah, it, you know what? It made me want to see the original film yep. more than and That's what I thought remake. too. I was like, I need to yeah. go see that. I'm really curious. I do judge so. people who watch anime with like English dub. <laughs> I think a lot of people do, yeah. I do. I have to admit there are some really good <laughs> There's some really good dubs out there. There's some really good English dubs of anime. Out there. That's how I started. And anyway, I watched dubs. Yeah. You know, well, that's what was on TV. My I was on Sci Fi Channel. That's when they, that's how that, I got an anime. Oh, yeah. It's the old Sci Fi Channel. Yep, 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 yep. Before the Toonami thing came out that everyone got. Oh, out. nice. Yeah. 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 Tom. Classic. They're already talking about remaking Squid Game for American audiences. Are you yep. kidding me? I'm sure that. for the same reason, mm -hmm. right? Because yep, they didn't exactly. want to read. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Oh, Shiv leaves subtitles on for every movie, so foreign doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, I I, I, hmm. I actually don't judge people for having captions on because you know it it does clarify the ambiguity. If you don't like hear it sure. correctly, you have it. You know, you don't have to just read the whole thing. But um, to be too lazy to just you know, I mean, you you lose out on so many good horror films too. Yep, like so we many. love the cultural like folk horror, mm. love all the Asian stuff, right? What's Definitely. That one that oh yeah, like? you know the one. The like the gate like. and like the demon at the end and that describes every supernatural yeah, like every supernatural movie. Talking about the gate, <laughs> the gate and the demon at the end. Yes. 
So there's like the gate that she passes through and there's like a drum ritual and uh mm. then and then at the end you like meet uh the demon guy and he's like you can trust me i'm good and you're like no it's gonna do this and then she does and he's like why would you do that you're so fucking stupid and then kills her do you know what i'm talking I about have no drum line <laughs> it's in the can there it is, yeah, there it is. we brought it back it's, we brought it back white well something right what was it oh. isn't it white something white something yeah. Okay. All right. Chad, help Does us he? out. Find this mystery movie with a gate and a demon. That, does, that doesn't whittle it down a lot, but you go. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. Although sometimes I will say subtitle stuff we can't watch when we're eating. The Just wailing. Like these, oh, all sure. the wailing. The Did wailing. I not oh. describe it accurately? Ooh. Gate and demon. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't it. remember that. Right. Help me out, Chad. Okay. I'm, it's been a long time. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. Okay. Whatever. You're right. <laughs> You're so right. If it right. was in English, you would have remembered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should turn subtitles on. Uh, yeah, so let's jump to some other right. interesting yes, news. Yes, sorry. Uh, so there's another announcement I saw. Chris, I saw you posted a video about this on your yeah. channel. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're a big Turtle fan as, as I am. I don't think Lana's a, much of a Turtle fan. No. No, I think I just showed you the I'm first movie. I'm a big movie. pizza fan. Nice. Yeah, and you Halfway like pet there. turtles. Halfway pet there. Turtles, I like right? turtles. Turtles. Turtles are turtles. The turtle, turtle movie. Was that Dana Carvey? That <laughs> yeah, yeah. terrible the master of disguise. Master of disguise. Yeah, oh, disguise. Go there. Maybe master of disguise. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, the turtles, they're coming back in live action. Um, yep. Uh, which is the part that got me excited right there. But then it's also the last Ronin adaption of this, which I have not read. I've seen the toys, and I thought they mm. looked cool. So I'll, I'll say that. That's about all my knowledge is of it. Um, but I'd love to see turtles in live action again. Uh, you know, that's, that's a, a thing that I think that was the first time as a kid I was like, they were going to take a cartoon and make it real, right? And I got really right. excited for it. I remember the even the marketing was like, this ain't no kids movie game or I think something. you're right. Something this ain't no cartoon. cartoon. This ain't no cartoon. That's what it was. <laughs> this ain't no cartoon. And I was like, oh, yeah. shit, yeah. You're yeah. right. This isn't. I was so excited because back then it was such a big leap, you know, when you see it was. the cartoon to the movie that's like, whoa, it's it's like real. Um, now it's every day. Um, but yeah. – you know, I just I just wanted to bring up some of the older posters too before we get too much in it. But here's the first Ninja Turtles. I just showed you this, Lana. Mm. You, I think you actually enjoyed it a little bit. You were like, "This isn't bad." The live action. Yeah, that remember? I saw? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It, was, it had it Dirty fun. New York, a really dirty, dirty New York in this film, by the way. I was confused because all the turtles look exactly alike. Yeah, well, that's I mean, true. They do they kind of do? They just have. They've changed they them up in recently. The, yeah, in the animation, they don't. And I can actually tell them apart. Yeah. yeah. So I love that one. We all watched as a kid. I had. I remember that's again. That's where I saw my Fantastic Four teaser over and over again on there. Uh, that was on the VHS. Uh, here's the pictures of them. Look at those cute turtles. Oh, look, at them. Look, at them. look at them. Look at those expressions. Jim them. Henson rocking it here. Uh, oh, it's <laughs> Henson. Cool. Turtles 2, Seeker of the Ooze. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that a lot as a kid. This is when I, every sequel when I was a kid, I thought was better. Like, if it's a sequel, right. I knew it was going to be better than the first one. It just had to be, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so I went in this one excited. I actually enjoy as a kid, as an adult, I do not enjoy it. Mm. Uh, the 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 rap uh, dance is still pretty good. Go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, hell yeah, go ninja, go. <laughs> go. go. Vanilla uh, ice, <laughs> vanilla ice, right? And that, that's such a great great scene. Oh um, man! Then we went yeah. to which they went back to feudal Japan. And what year was this? They went back to Japan. I don't remember what year exactly. Fifteen ninety three. Fifteen ninety three. They went back. Did you yeah. just pull that out of your head? No, it's on the poster. Oh, <laughs> damn it. It's just like, Chris has just got so much I, swear. I should have said, yeah, I just saw yeah. I always knew. I always knew. This is a cool like, poster. Holy shit, know. Chris. It is a cool poster. Yeah. I don't remember being this poster you as a, a kid. You a lot of facts Didn't there. you see them in Shogun? Didn't you see them in Shogun recently? Yeah. Sorry, like, what a twist. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when yeah. things started taking a dive. I mean, 2 was taking a slow down, but this is when it really dived, uh, from the yeah. live action at least. I mean, killed um, the franchise. It killed the franchise, like, really. Cinematically, cinematically. Actually. Yeah. They also added dots to the turtles, if you notice. We have speckles. They are diseased now. Uh, this is when <laughs> the turtles, liver spots. Got liver spots the turtles started getting some liver spots, and oh, I think shit. that, that also turned me off. Yeah. <laughs> Why are they speckled? You got to change something. Like We can't keep using the same outfits. They also had a little bit more articulation. They could move a little bit more. I can so. see the muscly uh, sinew. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. It well, wasn't working for me, I remember, as a kid. Uh, and then we went to – this was actually, I think – Oh Turtle God. 2 is this is more around, but this was the coming out of the shell tour, which is the live oh. action. Uh, the This was touring around the United States that they go on stage and they would huh. rock out because, oh. you know, turtles know should be rocking. Go oh, ninja, absolutely. Go ninja, go. And if you guys look that up, you can watch <laughs> oh a live of that. There's some of the worst songs you'll ever hear. I bet. Um, 
but that was the other live action thing I was into at the time. That's like he's Ooh. in a leotard. Oh yeah, he's in a leotard. Uh, there's an inter interview with uh, Oprah. They go on Oprah and they talk like as <laughs> no, musicians, uh, of course they do, uh, doing Amazing. their tour. Incredible. It's pretty funny. You need to watch Poor it. Oprah. Uh, <laughs> and then we had this is the last one I remember before I really bowed out. Uh, they did a live action TV show, uh, which is oh. on Fox. I think this is around your uh, Power Rangers time, probably. Yeah, they guest starred. They guest starred in Space Rangers. I remember. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah and we yeah, had a female yeah. Ninja Turtle come in to right. play here. Mm -hmm. uh, these look like puppets that have been sitting on the shelf too long, uh, and things are starting to fall apart. Yeah, really. Uh, Miles are falling over. Oh, this wow. looks bad. <laughs> uh, it has boobs. Yeah, I, yeah, she has boobs. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the bandanas look like they stretch over the mouths. Am, yeah. am I seeing that right? Is there something weird going on with Michael? They're, yeah, it's like over their. What? If you look at the Michelangelo bandana. and Donatello's masks, are weird. Yeah, yeah, they go over the jaw. Yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be here, not going over your jaw. I don't know what's going on. They're getting, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Stretched, that is, but. Yeah. Anyways, all of that just to say, now we got. Oh, they were in oh, wait, space. Sorry, I forgot this one. There was this too. Remember, we had this other live action. I would say as quotes. Uh, there is live action, but these are CG Holy turtles. Holy shit, they're yeah. jacked. Yeah, yeah this was the most recent oh Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Uh, Michael produced. Bay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, he did this. And guess who's there? You know, April O'Neil, of course, is your girl, Megan Fox. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah, she's rocking it there. She's... This looks like Transformers. Uh, Straight up is. Yeah. 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 Aesthetically, yeah. tonally, it is, it is yeah. through and through. Yeah. So this was the last, and there was a sequel after this, and then we sort of took a break from live action, and then we went into the enemy. Why again. does the yellow one look like a rabbit? <laughs> It does look like he a does look like a rabbit. You're right. The, the little ears yeah, I mean, going the, the, there, yeah, right? the droopy ears. Too, yeah, he has right? droopy ears. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. He's got like a nose, like a heart. I like nose. it more now. There is a rabbit character in the Ninja Turtle toys. I remember he's a samurai. Mm. I don't know his name's it Yabuki or something with a Y. I don't remember. Um, anyways, all of that. Just want to give mm. the history of live action. That was a long history. That was a long history. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. I thought Thanks that was fun context. just to go through Yeah, I liked it. I, was, I didn't know. I, I learned some stuff. I didn't <laughs> know about the PowerPoint rock presentation. Yeah, I know. This yeah, is my PowerPoint fun. presentation on live action turtles. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and now I want to go to Chris because I know nothing yep. about Ronin. And I know this is going to be an a R-rated, not R-rated, but maybe R-rated. It is R-rated. Uh, it is. It is R-rated. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an adult version of this, uh, but set in, with samurais and stuff like that with turtles and live action. Which Are we is, doing a review on this? Because I really don't want to buy a turtle suit. <laughs> you, what april's there again though you, you, we can get you you can get oh, you the april. oh yeah you can be april april's the there thing we can go. always oh go God. to okay, remember okay. Yeah. yeah what were you gonna suggest chris uh i was gonna say get the the female turtle suit put you in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably up on ebay you it's can probably, probably get it yeah it's probably, probably fall apart by now it's probably a little weathered it. now but uh but april neil probably a little easier to do probably a little weathered. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one turtle that's it she's the one girl turtle like that's interesting. Oh, that's an, that must be awkward for her, because <laughs> you know they're like, "Listen, you're the only one. You're the only one." And you know, <laughs> yeah. we've had Splinter, and yeah. you know, I don't know. Well, Anyways, I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna link this to you, Alan, so you can pop it up if you want. Sure. Show oh, me what man. you got. But go for it, Chris. Let's tell us about uh, Ronin. I'm really curious. Well, about that's it. the thing. So for this movie, yeah, it's based on this yeah seminal comic, and the whole concept of it is that uh, three of the original turtles are dead, and you're following oh, wow. the last surviving member who is going on this one man quest where some allies have become villains. Some villains have become allies, new characters introduced, and he's seeking vengeance for the death of his brothers. And I think mm -hmm. like other, other people that have assisted the turtles in the past, uh, a big part of the, um, uh, I won't ruin it, but a big part of the story that I've been told is that you don't know what turtle it is for a long time. Oh. And then you find out later on what turtle it is. Now it's been ruined for me, but for other people, I think it's a big part of the mystery. And so I think that's a pretty cool concept. And the fact that they hmm. want to make it rated R and live action, that's what really surprised me. I think that's great because uh, the turtles back then, yeah, everyone remembers the cartoons, original movies. Back in the day, the turtles were like hardcore. Like they yeah. were, uh, uh, the, like the original i actually uh, for a long time that's how i was actually initially exposed to turtles was through the original graphic novel which was just a uh, a parody of daredevil where mm. you know the ooze is the same ooze that blinded daredevil you know like no. Dare yeah yeah oh that's cool the uh the the of course the turtles have the the foot clan who's one of their enemies daredevil has the hand who are there ah. some of his enemies and so, so that's what tmnt is it's a parody of daredevil and frank miller's daredevil and uh, that's how I was exposed to. And I've been exposed to a few other things. I've seen some of the, the movies. I love Team and Team Mutant Mayhem. So it's great to see this franchise just kind of um, being reignited recently. And, and, and I think it's very smart that you're going to make Turtle content for different demographics. Mm -hmm. So you have the cartoon movies and things and the animated shows for, for kids and, and for adults. But then you have something that's definitely a little different. 
uh, that maybe even harkens obviously back to like the original turtle content that I read. So I think this is a cool concept. I'm very excited about it. I'm curious if they're going to get as a director because I we don't know who's attached yet. That's a good point. You don't prefer Michael Bay? No, no, I don't want him. (laughs) He directed. Yeah. No, no, not him either. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah, I don't know who I would get for this. That's some people have been suggesting um, like a James Mangold for it. You know, mm-hmm. who did like Logan, but you know, he's coming off of Indiana Jones, so he's he's yeah. licking his wounds right now. Oh, so yeah. uh yeah, I don't know who I would get, but um yeah, oh. it's uh some some people have mentioned Zack Snyder. I'm like, oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> slow motion, black yeah. and white, everything yep. like that. It's Definitely. interesting that the yeah. that you don't know who the turtle is because mm-hmm. I would imagine so having just kind of seen the original TMNT, the first live action, I imagine that you're supposed to be able to distinguish the turtles by their personality, maybe like their the color. You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 not well, I mean that would be the easy way, right? right. But they do have their own personalities yeah. and quirks and likes and stuff. Uh so interesting that you could go through a whole you know, feature and not know which turtle it is. Um, so I don't know. Do they it's, say dude it, totally and all that still in their own? Probably not. No, it's, it's, it, it's because serious. of all the tragedy that's happened. This turtle's personality has completely changed okay. so no and totally he's just awesome. not oh, the way he so used sad. to be. No yeah. shell shock or whatever. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do they call oh, one man. of the, you know, the, uh, Spin off sort of shell shock because they have coming out of their There's shell. There's lots of shell, shell yeah. things. Turtle in a half shell, yeah. all that stuff. It's Turtle just crazy pound. how long this franchise, the Turtles, has lasted. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, it's still going. And I think I was listening to another podcast, the Toy Anxiety guys, they were talking about how they're going to die and the Turtles are just going to keep going. There's going to be new Turtle toys yeah. every day. And you can even be a picky toy collector when it comes to turtles because there's so much to pick from. You can be like, oh, I want this type of turtle. You're not just forced to the one type of turtle there is. So. Um, it's just such a popular, and all the recent anime stuff have been so mm-hmm. good. It's actually been pretty hard bar. Even there was like a one in maybe 2008 or something. There was even a CG one. Uh, it was in theaters, I swear. Oh yeah, and, I know you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was actually all right too. That was pretty good. The animation's there, but it was good. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm excited for this too. Uh, I, I, I have not I know nothing about it except for what you just said. And uh, mm-hmm. as a turtle fan, uh, I, I really look forward to seeing something that, like dark again. You know, get that, that grittiness. You know, maybe this in New York. Yeah, uh, maybe is it is it still New York? Is it like? Yeah, yeah I think it's. I think. I think a lot of it is New York. Yeah, <laughs> dirty New York. Dirty Dystopian. New York. It's too yeah. clean now. Unless we can find a dirty corner. I'm sure it's not. At. So, yeah, I was okay. curious. Dion is from New York. He would have. He'll give us insight into oh, the I New know. York. Yeah. The, he's got the thick New York accent too. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, do they eat pizza there? I guess they don't eat pizza. Do they? Not anymore. <laughs> too, depressed for pizza. too depressed for pizza yeah yeah Aww. so i'm excited for that and i mean the turtle Eat world has so many characters they can play with they too. do so many villains yeah and i, I love krang he's still one of my favorites yeah. just the toy is it, i love that big guy with the the tummy monster the cream tummy inside monster. Him. yeah tummy yeah monster i call it it's <laughs> tummy monster yeah <laughs> you got baxter um, stockman and all that baxter mm-hmm. stockman was great yeah. mm-hmm. uh god and like video games again we've all grown up playing those the arcade game that was so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, There's just so much fun stuff. And here's the picture Lana sent me, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see it. I, I'm really curious. What here's my is. next cosplay Ooh. for my review for? on TMNT. Oh, we're going to do this one. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my. No, there you go. Let's yeah, go. perfect. <laughs> wow. Titty turtles. I like it. They're I like nice. it. Mm-hmm. Why are they so smooth? Very smooth. I don't like these. Turtles are smooth. Turtles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Female they turtles are smooth. That's what we're learning. Yeah. <laughs> they have sandals on. Turtles yeah, they do. They do. Very, very, well, uh, very turtles Sailor Moon turtles. Don't weapons either. I don't hear you complaining about that. <laughs> I love it. Some turtles. Can. Sailor Moon <laughs> turtles. I love. This is very much Sailor Moon turtles. Yeah. yeah right. Wow. Okay. Well, that, that's nice. interesting. I'm loving it. Okay. Well, like we might review that one. <laughs> we'll probably do it. Show it. <laughs> do it. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for All it. Right. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Awesome. Well, I, that, thanks for telling us about that. I was really curious. So let's stop that one. And she cool. says, do it. Do Woo, it. Do, do it. it. Turtle nice. cosplay. Go Perfect. for it. Are we reviewing TMNT? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why the <laughs> fuck not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned so much. I am very intrigued by this Daredevil in- information. Yeah. 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 Being a, just a parody of Daredevil. That's yeah. where it all came from. All right. Well, we do have some. I guess we have a couple minutes to do all the optional things you wanted to do. Sure. Yeah, go for what, it. What did you find from I didn't get any pictures up for it, though, but we'll just talk. Uh the there were some other interesting oh there's an interesting yeah michael j fox i was reading he did an interview yesterday vanity fair did some quick like uh mm-hmm. 
article on all these old actors they really respect uh and we we respect as well and he was on there and he was saying how uh in the 80s uh he was he was he he felt like it was very it was hard to be famous in the 80s right and i agree mm-hmm. with him it was hard to be famous there wasn't social media and all yep. this didn't stuff have a problem you didn't have a problem <laughs> but he said there was more talent in the 80s too which is a fun oh. interesting he said that i was like oh i see you're bringing mm-hmm. that up fighting fun. words some fighting words <laughs> you had to be really talented to be famous and he's like these days you don't have to be talented he's, he's like i could just wear a sweater that's fa- you know like a big brand and i can show it um and i was like okay that's interesting um i felt that a little bit too at times you know some of these actors we see in these movies i'm like they're good um but are they are they 80s good is the question right uh, and, and that's an interesting thing to, to even ask uh because i still think people are really talented when i it's mm-hmm. like being, being an actor is yeah. really hard to do you know i mean even our little skits we do are really hard i know it's you know? tough <laughs> <laughs> a lot of investment and you gotta write it gotta do all that yeah. perform it and all yeah. that different takes but it takes so. a talent to do it and you know mm-hmm. to do those things and, and i guess the big question the big question for all of us here is uh were 80s you know were people in the 80s just better at acting uh, I think they, they went through now. a lot more trauma than we have in the modern day. And <laughs> yeah. Trauma Did they try harder? Character. Was they had to try harder to get in well, roles? Well, women had to try right? harder yeah, to get roles. Yeah, that's true. Definitely. Yeah. It, I mean, it's hard to get noticed, you know. It You mm-hmm. had to, to go through – I mean, the technology at the time is just – at mm-hmm. that time was not as advanced as it is now. And so, I mean, yeah. to his point where, you know, yeah, you don't have to be very talented to get famous. I mean, he's right. There's a lot of people online that have made entire careers just – I mean, doing nothing or, oh, you know, know or, or having little AI. personality. Yeah. Ex- yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much to it. So I'm not, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it definitely um, ruffled a lot of feathers when he said that, but I mean, I don't think he's wrong, you know, and he, I mean, he probably went through, I watched a documentary on his life not too long ago. Yeah. That and was great. Mm-hmm. He, iTunes, right? Yeah. Or something like yeah. That. Yeah. I liked it. And, and, you know, he struggled. He was talking about, yeah, I was living off of Smuckers, like not even like, like, peanut butter jarred like the things you get at Denny's and shit and so I was like so it was hard for him and you know he had to do a lot of movies a lot of different you know actors they tried and and then what happened to them so I think I I I don't think anything he said is too controversial it's like no I get it I get it plus he he had what 40 plus years of experience so Mm -hmm. you know when he was trying different things was interesting about Michael J. Fox we could do a whole talk on Michael J. Fox because he's one of my favorite actors ever besides you know Bats of Future um he was trying different things. He was doing like a war movie right after, I think he mm-hmm. did like this, like really, yeah, real serious war movie. He was doing Secret of My Success. He was doing Bat to Future. Uh, he was, he's, you could tell he's, he's like really trying to, you know, become a better actor, Yeah. right? Like he's actually trying to really reach out. He's not just sticking to one thing, like his, you know, you know, fast running. His lane. Uh, yeah, his lane, uh, if you will. So uh, I just have mad respect for him all the time. And even now, you know, all the, the, the things he has to go through with his Parkinson's. personal life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's still, he has such a great, huh, you know, Still, uh, that was the name of the, uh, uh, that the, name of the, a, the name of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's just, he seems like a really cool dude and he knows his stuff and he wants to act again even. He's like, I'll, if I see something that fits with what I, you know, my, what I sure. currently have to go through and I can work it in, I'll do it. You know, he's, he's still interested in actually doing the craft, which is awesome. Good for him. And, yeah. uh, you know, but he also was during that time too. He said, I remember in that documentary, he was saying he went through a lot of fun drug Benders with uh, Woody Harrelson, and mm. <laughs> uh, you know he had a lot it's of right crazy passage. times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he had a lot of crazy times. I'm curious if that's the same sort of Hollywood these days. Do they have that sort of thing? This is like a I don't know. I'm not yeah. anywhere, anywhere near that. Do they the go outside. through those? I mean, it sounds like we have like Ezra Miller. That's what we hear about, right? <laughs> you know, re- doing grooming someone or something like that. But we don't ha- we don't hear about other things that could possibly be going on. Sure. I'm curious if it's that crazy anymore. No. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to compare too because I mean, we don't have features that we used to, right? Like you you'll never see a lot of those different movies that came out in the 80s come out today. Yeah. Like mm. rom-coms in general as a genre just like not oh, happening. I miss rom-coms. Except for like ones. no hard feelings and like some stupid stuff like that. Uh but yeah. yeah the street, the they go to streaming. Too. Yeah. A lot yeah. of these different genre films are going to different just it's they're not in theaters. Like we don't really see that many comedies anymore. We don't see that many. Yeah, I mean, as you point out, Lana, uh, yeah, like romantic comedies or romantic films, they're all going just yeah to these platforms. So yeah. it's, it's and, different. And, it's and with the way that things are, I mean, you couldn't show no like a secret to my success to an audience, and people would think it's adorable <laughs> and <laughs> funny. They're gonna be like, "Wow, that is sexist and wrong, and we should burn him." Uh, so I mean, it's a completely different environment. I don't yeah. know if it's fair to compare. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that was just a fun thing I saw. It was. Yeah. I can't hear. Uh oh, Alana froze. 
Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it working. I don't know if you guys can hear me in the chat. We did talk about how it might have. Uh, they did say it might freeze at one point. She opened up the tab again. And that's what happened. Literally movies tab. I could be talking to the gnome. I could just be talking to the ether right now. We'll get together. Oh, my God. You're right, Austin. Crispin Glover. <sighs> Talk about a maniac. <laughs> Him on Back to the Future and on Friday the 13th. Oy. You hear me? Yeah. Remember that scene in, in Friday the 13th uh, the, for the final chapter where he's dancing? I'm like, Jason, please kill him. Get get him out of here. He's 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 making me nervous. <laughs> and thankfully, Jason did us a favor and he did just that. I was like, thank God. <laughs> he was the hero in that movie. Yeah, frozen computer. No problem. I can keep the people entertained. I can I can take questions from the chat. Keep talking. Any opinion? Goddamn Will a oh, Willard? Yeah, him and his rats. What a weirdo. They're back. Yay! I was like, don't type. I'll be back in like two seconds. Anyway. I was just laughing. All good. All good. It's okay. It's my, I was talking my, about my Crispin Glover's nervous. weird ass. Oh, really? Crispin yeah. Glover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's a maniac. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Have you seen it? The TV yeah. Show? The TV yeah. show? Mm -hmm. Okay. We mm -hmm. talked about yeah, that. Yeah, I reviewed yeah. it. Oh, you reviewed it. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. I, I, I liked it. Um, I'll, uh, It's very different from the movie, which was great for me because I didn't really care for the original film. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but I loved the chemistry between Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. And I, my only criticism of it is, is the ending. And it's cause it doesn't, oh. doesn't really have an ending. It's just like, ah, oh. next season, I guess. So, you know, oh, which I'm is Donald Glover's thing. See... He's not good at ending things. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm always interested to see what people think of him. Uh, Donald Glover. I know we were talking about Crispin Glover. I was like, Oh yeah. Uh, because I always known him as like, you know, the, we talked about this, but mm -hmm. known him from the show, love him as an artist. Yeah. Never really seen him act like act act mm. um, and like something serious. So, uh, but I, I feel like people approach him and they always have like a uh, preconceived notions of him because of his music. So, Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a Renaissance man. That's the thing about him. He does everything. Yeah. Music, writing, directing, acting. All right. Well, well the I last one more, thing. I have yep. one more. I had here. One Let's more. do one more that got announced, which is really kind of a throwaway. Oh but... yeah. You've been waiting <laughs> to talk about this. <laughs> I wanted this, to talk actually. about this. Oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. So the scary movie oh, franchise that. is coming back. Mm. Uh, interesting uh, that we're at this point where we're bringing back the scary movie franchise. Uh, maybe horror is just that good again that we can start doing this. Yeah, horror is <laughs> big right now. Right? Yes. And I, my question to you guys is, do you think this is going to be looking at more, not the screams, but looking at like A24 type horror? Oh. Uh, being more of a fun look at the slow, you know, moody things and doing you know, humor with that and that was just elevated horror was elevated like horror but yeah. uh doing parodies yeah. of that sort of thing what do you think chris um <laughs> i you know yeah they could definitely look into that they can do that and i'm sure they will touch on all of those movies the x maxine and pearl and stuff yeah. and barbarian i mean definitely ripe for parody no question um and they could also bring back scream and ghostface since the scream <laughs> movies are coming out again so they, they sure. in a way it would be like a reboot of of the scary movie franchise my problem is is like i actually like the first two scary movies a lot they're yeah. fun yeah. um i feel like once you know three and four i didn't even see the fifth one. i heard it was terrible yeah. i think the only way they can properly bring this back is if they get like the original like wayne's involved to a degree you know who like wrote and were heavily involved in making those first two movies probably as good as as they were get anya ferris back get mm. um um oh, i forget her 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 other uh co-lead in um in um in the films but in any case like get a lot of those people. is that what you're saying Carmen Electra, right? <laughs> no, Carmen no, no 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 i'm trying lead? to no, or, no. I, i'm trying to remember her name regina not um hall. regina hall thank you regina hall i was thinking not regina king not regina king regina hall and um like get them then i would be excited for that and along with all the stuff they could potentially parody because i don't want like a, a scary movie four for instance which i really <laughs> did not like and I don't want like Scare Movie Five, which I heard was atrocious. You know, I mean, and the thing is, like the parody movies disappeared. Like I they think did. the 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 Freeberg and Seltzers killed it. They killed it dead, thanks to Disaster Movie and Vampires Suck and Meet the Spartans. And it's like we don't get this type of comedy anymore. And That's so, crazy. if they're gonna bring it back, you better bring it back with a lot of style and a lot of substance and and and, and good comedic writing. It does seem like the right time to do it, though. I yeah. never thought about the fact that, you know, horror has really changed yeah. since then. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, to, to I mean, with A24 being as big as it is, you could just make the whole scary movie about A24 films. And yeah. I think it would be great. 
I mean, SNL does this type of stuff, right? They, they're constantly parroting the skits. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah so, of course. Their job. And that's their job. So I think you do it. I, I miss the days again of like Naked Gun, you know, that type of humor, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's influenced Family Guy, you know, yeah. and things like that. And uh, we watched Naked Gun, I, I swear, when her mom was visiting in, uh, oh, yeah. Christmas, and her mom just laughed so oh, loud. Yeah. It's funny to see that sort of. <laughs> And I haven't seen her laugh, I think, that hard at no. anything we've watched crying. ever. Yeah. She was in tears. Did first nice. two third naked guns, and she's like, yeah. this is great. Third and one I, even. I never really oh. understood her, because I can make her laugh, right? Yeah. But I never like have seen her actually laugh at uh, t television in general, yeah. really. Mm. Yeah. 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 The Zucker yeah. Brothers. That's where they were, the Zucker Brothers. Because mm. my parents, they lived right next to him, I guess, at some point. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I would love to see this type of humor come back, as long as it's good and funny yeah. and uh it just doesn't i just hope we don't get other stuff again like let's just start here let's stick with horror a little bit and let's not like you said go to the spartans let's not start Ugh. making one of like superhero movies or i'm sure they'll do a comic book one i'm sure someone's been they doing have right they now. had superhero movie that's what it was called you know was it really so this, that's yeah. been done. okay so maybe we've already passed that and we can, yeah. i feel like yeah. the superhero movies are the like parodies. parodies of superhero movies sure a lot of people would say that yeah they'd argue that now <laughs> that was 2008 god yep yeah wow but yeah, I'm excited for it. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually at first I was like, oh, I hated scary movie, but I did have fun with it at the time. So the first two were pretty Nielsen fun. Was in it? Was he in that? Apparently, he was in the third one. He played the president. Oh god, he's like, I gotta get in on this. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's my thing, man. <laughs> so I, I'm taking by this winky face that you're not going to be reviewing disaster movie. Oh, my chat's been trying to get me to review that film. I think maybe I have to. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I owe a lot of like. I do spoiler reviews for films and I break them down. And so I might know that for all I know. I probably do. Have to well, do you're going to have to do one for the remake of Naked Gun with Liam Neeson. Is I heard this, about that. Is this it's real? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's real. real. Oh, mm -hmm. why? I mean, wow. I could <laughs> see Liam Neeson pulling it off. Actually. I think he can do it. He has that. Yeah. He could have that comedic timing, that yeah. kind of deadpan. Yeah, I get the serious. He's got the serious yeah. and then gets that. Yeah. Like oh, he thinks really he's good. in a serious movie and everyone else is, it's a comedy. <laughs> like that's how you'd make it. Yeah. He thinks he's in a Taken movie. Yeah. I did watch yeah. uh, Forbidden Planet for the that's first right. time. I did show you oh, Forbidden yeah. Planet. Oh, yeah. Classic. One of my yeah. favorite sci fi films. So. I, I didn't realize he was ever that young. I thought he was born 80. So yeah. that was a surprise. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah he Star does Trek. actually look young so. there. It's one of his yeah, few films. Yeah, he did. He did. He was a handsome man. Yeah. You know, since no, we're on the Liam Neeson topic. Uh, yeah. one of the first things I think it was when we, it, before we even, we didn't record this. It was just like when you were interviewing me, if I was, if I was, <laughs> uh, if I would, uh, uh, be part of the show. And we talked about, uh, I talked about my friend, one of my favorite Leslie Nielsen movies that my community turned me on to, which is day of the animals, which mm. is, uh, one where he's a, uh, he's just this, it's where basically the animals attack because the ozone layer is degrading <laughs> and it's him on this hiking trip of a bunch of other people. And he's like the bad guy. He's the human bad guy. And he's like, even before it starts, he's like super racist and obnoxious. And, you know, he's like calling the Native American guy, you know, Hey chief, how oh, you doing? Kimosabi, oh, Kimosabi oh. is going to rain. Like, and he's hilarious. And he just, he goes off at one point. He loses his mind. and becomes a monster. Oh, it's hilarious. I've like, what never a great heard performance. It. I, we have to watch this. Gotta watch yeah. Day of the Animals. Okay, Gotta watch it. On. It's okay. Great. That sounds good. 1977. That would be a good commentary to do. Okay. 1977. <laughs> yeah, wow, watch a long party for Day yeah. of the Animals. That sounds yeah. fun. It's a yeah. horror. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a horror movie, but it's a it's a comedy. So it's one of his yeah. earlier films then. He wasn't Okay. Apparently he did Mr. he did Freeze a lot of horror films it? back in the day. Did he? He he did like oh. prom night. He was a cop in prom night. Not a very good one. Prom night. Yeah. Do I remember that? I remember yeah. the movie, but so I don't that's with that. um, Jimmy Lee Curtis. Have to watch it with me. Yeah, Jimmy he Lee refuses Curtis. to watch Prom Night with me, even though I have the shirt. So. I know we, we can go and pass it because I remember I didn't really care that much about it when I saw it, but maybe I need to revisit it. Yeah, revisit. Right. It's wow. fun. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Liam Neeson's getting around. That's awesome. Getting around. Getting around. I love that guy. <laughs> Man, he'd be great in Naked Gun. Now I'm, I'm just seeing him, you know, Frank Drebin, and he's just got that badge, just pulling it out. He's gonna, he's gonna nail that. That's a great casting. Whoever yeah. thought of that. They deserve all the money. So, yeah, it's just funny that you mentioned that because, uh, you know, we just watched the finale of um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? 11. Oh, right, right, right. That's one thing we should say yeah. we watched. Yeah, we did watch yeah, that. That's yeah, yeah, right. we did. That's what we've been spending some time doing. It was just funny that you mentioned the fact that he was calling an Indian, like a Native American guy, chief, because they were talking about, like, oh, yeah, you never called somebody chief before? He's like, well, I used to until I did it to an Indian guy, and now I don't do that shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kerb is so good. Kerb, yeah. uh, Kerb, Kerb is great. Held up all the way to the end. So. Right. Nice. Anyways, but yeah, that was great. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think, there's any other big news? I think we cover most of the, the stuff I was interested in. Did anything pop to you, Chris? That, you had you the know, one thing on the list. I don't know if you wanted to cover. Oh, it was from yeah, last let's do week. one more. Let's this get out is of the way. one I thought you'd be most excited. Yeah. About. I know. I, I, for, I know. I know. So yeah, I. Gosh, I should have some images. I don't because I've had it for unbelievable. So long. I don't. Uh, yeah. So if you guys have seen, if, did you see the most recent Transformers movie, The Beast? Oh yeah, I it was okay. good. Okay. okay, I didn't care for it. Okay, I hate you both. <laughs> she <laughs> liked it a lot. You have terrible taste. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit more in the middle of the road, but I did enjoy parts of it. Yeah, and other parts I did not. Um, but it did have an interesting spoiler. I don't want to like spoil anyone here. I'm sure the people it, here it came seen out a million it. years ago. Oh, it's like a year ago. It wasn't that long. Um, That's enough time. Yeah. But at the end, they have a G.I. Joe uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, introduced that that universe yep. exists, I guess. is the thing. Mm -hmm. They walk in. He puts his card down. He's like, if you, got, if you need help, call me. And it's like a G.I. Joe card. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that ends. Obviously, all the all us nerds, us 40 year old nerds went, oh, my <laughs> God. Yes. Finally, it's going to happen a crossover because we love nothing better than crossing things over. Because it's <laughs> yeah. always better when you have two those two things coming together, right? Like Freddy mm -hmm. versus Jason or exciting. Alien versus Predator, put them together. Um, so yeah, so that, that it sounds like the the time I wrote this was more. Mm -hmm. Is it going to happen? And now I found out. To, I think it was two days ago. Two days it ago. is happening. There you go. Uh, it was announced. They are doing it. Um, I don't know who's doing it. I didn't get too deep into the article, but uh, are you excited for that, Chris? Because I I personally, uh, it could be again. It could be what we just saw the beast wars which you were kind of like eh yeah but with gi joe in it so it's probably just gonna be just eh or it could be something good we could get something that they really try hard and make this a whole new i don't know a whole new franchise what do you think um i am not against a crossover between these two properties i think they they can absolutely absolutely work my problem is is just the state of them right now like the tra i think bumblebee was like wow this is really good and point. then they followed up with the most recent movie, which I thought was a, a, a letdown compared to Bumblebee. And um, G.I. Joe, they have not made a good live action film of the ones that I have I have seen, like Rise of Cobra and the I sequel one. Time. And they did Snake Eyes, which was awful. And so it's like, so, OK, are you crossing over with those movies or is G.I. Joe going to be? Is this a whole new iteration of the team? So what's the state of the Transformers universe? Are the Michael Bay movies canon is Bumblebee? And then and then the this most recent one, Beast Wars, which, which, the, which the the Maximals are barely in it, by the way, which is what frustrated me because I watched the original Beast Wars CGI cartoon back in the day. Like they're hardly in it. They're in the first part and then they're in the last part. Anyway, um, I'm just like, OK, so I don't even know the state of this universe is. And so who so who are the who are the Joes that are going to be crossed over? Are you going to go back to the original cast? Are you going to bring in like Channing Tatum or like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or any of these people or Dennis Quaid? Or are you just it's just a new cast of Joes. And so you I'm just like, started over. You got it because, yeah, they're, they're failures. I mean, none of those they films were. made any money. And I mm -hmm. think the last one, the although what, the rumor that started this, that I wrote this even down was. The guy from Snake Eyes said, "Yeah, we're working on it, right?" He's like, "I, I know," so he thinks he's going to be in it at least. Oh man! Uh, but I doubt that. Henry like, Henry Golding, right? Henry Golding, yeah, Who's the crazy rich Asians guy. Yep, he's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, it's like you have to get rid of it. Just like wash away all the GI Joe. Some of the Transformer, I think, well, they're just robot CG robots. You can really just keep going. I don't know what you really have to change, except for the human characters. I don't think any of them stuck yeah, yet you know I just get rid it. of those it kind of set up um i forget anthony ramos is that the actor who played uh, i like him as an Link? actor i actually really enjoy yeah. him and everything i see I, he has like a fun energy to him um, sure and he was good in this i thought he was fun in in this i there was a this brother relationship remember mm -hmm. that we liked in, in the new one there's like the yeah, he's like helping his brother mm -hmm. um there's i didn't i think i'd see that in the transformers yeah film, that but, connection uh, to pete davidson the pete davidson robot <laughs> yeah because <laughs> he voiced uh whatever i don't know the name good. of the he robot was good. What was what was he called? I don't know what his name was. God, jazz. not Hot Rod, right? Not that wasn't jazz. Hot Rod. No, no. Might maybe been, it was Jazz. Was, maybe it was. It might I don't be know. Jazz. Transformers fans are like, ah, I know. <laughs> <You're not laughs> right now. Um, How dare you? Yeah, I don't know. I just, oh, I, I feel like Bumblebee was the first time where they finally, like, oh, you, you, you understand this now, and they found the heart, you know, of of the franchise. I just. I just don't think they've ever capitalized it, uh, the exception of Bumblebee very well. Like from those original cartoons and from like that movie, like the Transformers, the first movie like the that came out in 86 and stuff. And where it's just pretty much them. 
dealing with and they killed characters like starscream starscream dies and 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 uh, optimus dies it famously in the yeah. in the first 10 minutes like jesus this is cool and so yeah. you know i would be more invested if they had done something like that I'd be like yeah let's do a crossover now but i don't know i just don't know there's a, new CG, there's a new CG movie coming out with yeah, Chris there Hemsworth, is. right? Yep. Chris Hemsworth's The New Optimus, which mm -hmm. is interesting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear his voice because I, I guess he worked with Peter Cullen to hone it. Oh, cool. Uh, I didn't yeah, know that. To, to make it right. Um, nice. And they, I guess they showed some of the footage at uh, the Cinecon a couple days ago. And people say it looks awesome. It's mm -hmm. actually very it's actually very uh, adult and serious. Nice. Uh, and it's a movie. I thought it was a series. I didn't know it was going to be a yeah. movie. So it's a, it's a, it's a movie. It's an animated um, movie, right? Yeah. And it's actually with Mega, Megatron and Optimus when they're younger, uh, before they became villains. Uh, I like that. Uh, villains against each other. Hero they're, villain. Yeah. Yeah. Hero yeah. villain. Yeah. So they're yeah. best friends and buddies. And I guess they look younger even, which I'm like, how do you make them look younger? <laughs> they just, is their paint a little bit more... They're smaller. They're, They're smaller. not rusty. Yeah. They're not rusty. Yet. They're yeah, smaller. And they can't yeah. transform yet. That's the other thing. Oh. They haven't. They haven't gotten the ability to transform. So I guess that's a, a rite of passage. You can transform. Okay. Um, so I'm like, I like oh, that. cool. So that's gonna be them like figuring. I like to see a, a transformer like just working with his hand. He's like, oh man, how do I? Yeah. How do I get that tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I was always wondering, like, do they practice? Little Spider-Man figuring yeah. out his web. Yeah, because they just thing. scan <laughs> in the movies. They scan. And they can yep. do it, but mm -hmm. I'd love to see them. Like I always love, like you know, like Tony huh. Stark when he's like playing with his tech, failing. I want to see a transformer failing at transforming. Yeah, uh, and see that that'd be kind of fun. That would be that. cool. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah, there so you go. So that's something new. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like right? do stuff like that. Do where it's like it's character building stuff to Transformers because yeah. they just I don't they always lean away from that in a lot of live action films, mm -hmm. exception of Bumblebee. Awkward you Teen see, Transformers. Yeah. Bumblebee. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Bumblebee's the one we got to watch, too. That's the one I think you will like. Yeah. That's uh, a good one. Yeah, that one's really good. Yeah, the I, know. Soundtrack's I, great I too. hear great things about it. And, you know, and to defend my like for Rise of the Beast. <sighs> Go for it. Let's hear I it. didn't realize that. I mean, I thought the whole point was just to introduce them. So, mm. but, you know, as the title suggests, it should feature the, what do you call them? The, the Danimals? That's a snack. The Maximals. Maximals. You have the Maximals, okay. you have the Terracons, <laughs> the Predacons, you know. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, as the town suggests, they should have been more in it now that yeah. I've thought about it. Yeah, that was a big failing. So for me, I was like, oh, they've introduced them and I like them. Yay. Mm. But, mm. you know, it, it was definitely not what it should have been. But yeah. The action was just, again, it's just a typical overly CG. The camera yep. does things it shouldn't be doing. I want I think they, to make this stuff work, again, we talk about very similitude in, in film just make me believe it's real uh, that it exists and when you start breaking the camera away and it becomes all cg um again it just became a cg fest at the end and i, I wanted it to i don't know i don't know i mean obviously transformers you gotta do cg you can't do you know practical it's impossible probably to do that yeah, but, so but at least sell it more maybe with the camera work don't be as let a vfx guy direct that maybe have like spielberg come in and say don't well, I don't know Spielberg these days, but someone yeah. who who will put some limits on what you do, and I think that'll carry across to make it feel more he real. He is the exact producer, it. right? Was he of the Beast Wars? No, he's going. He's to of all of them. Oh. Uh, yeah, so he's part of all of it. Crossover. Yeah, oh. he he produced like all those movies. The thing is, like Spielberg to me, and I don't want I don't want to like go off on another tangent. Yeah, but course. Spielberg as a produ executive producer, he's just like put my name on it and pay me money. Yeah. He, I, don't, I think he has very little creative involvement in in that process, especially the Transformers films. But, um, but no, to your point, Alan, I feel like the thing that bothered me about so many of the Transformers movies is how, like the trans, like the Autobots themselves, they just don't really have personalities that you like. Like, I, one of the things that bothered me about the most recent film was why is Optimus such a dick? Like he's he's mean he, and Let's like he's he's like I'm gonna cut your head off. I was like Jesus, Optimus, take it easy. You know, I mean, you're supposed to be the inspiring leader. I mean, I don't mind if like, hey, he's trying to find that, but I was like, I don't know. It's just it's such a far departure. I feel like from those original characters, and that's why I don't really find it very appealing. But yeah, that's me. Wow. Well, interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking forward to it. We'll yeah. See yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm best. I'm yeah. Best. We'll see. I want to see a GI Joe's jump into a transformer. It transforms around. Him I bet and... they will. Yeah, and They'll some sort that. of war Ooh. vehicle, probably. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, They'll drive the vehicles, comic? right? They'll, they'll be the transformers. It'll be yeah. like you know. So, is there a comic of this, by the way? I would think yeah. there would be a comic already of this, right? Most recently, they've okay. um, Hasbro has leaned into the crossover stuff in the comics. Mm -hmm. Like they have transformers crossing over each other, GI Joe Power Rangers, because they, I, I think they still own, but yeah, and yeah, and and oh, transformers. Wow. So I, and if I was them, I would too? do all that. Think Ghostbusters? Maybe go I think you're right. I, I think you might be right. Wow, it's just happening. Everyone's so, crossing over. We'll see. Everything. 
Okay. All right. Oh, well, cool. we've also crossed over time. Okay. Sorry. No. <laughs> we can always nerd out here. That's fun. <laughs> no, it is fun. I just got to take dogs. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for another wonderful episode. And thanks everyone for staying long with us and Thank waiting you. for us to go live after our technical issues. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Dion was not able to join us today. And I meant to tell someone asked in the chat like an hour ago and I meant to say, but I forgot. Mm. Um, but yeah, Dion will hopefully join us not next week, but the week after that on the 27th. Uh, so we hope to have Dion here uh, next next time. But we will see you all next weekend. We might move some things around uh, time-wise, but we'll talk about it. We'll let you know way in advance. And uh, just love to sure. have you here and talk movies and, and shit. So thank you guys so much. Uh, if you want to catch more of Chris J. Herman, I would say go to his channel. But we are Chris J. Herman Fan Club, so we are going to make a bunch of shorts. All the things he said today, we're going to put them <laughs> all over literally movies everywhere. Uh, but you can and should like and subscribe to his page because he puts out so many reviews, so much content. We absolutely adore him. Thank you. Yes. And go to his Twitch, too, because that's fun. I yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, yep. it's, Monday through Friday. I, yeah. I'm on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. How? What, what time can we find you? Uh, usually around 5, 530. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time. Gotcha. Mm. Well, Alan, it's been real. Yeah, it has been real. See you later. Yeah, I'll see you later, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We just go separate right out of the room. Yeah, I know. Just leave. <laughs> leave the house. <laughs> oh, yes. And check out check out Chris's merch. Merch is actually super I do have a merch fun. Store. Yeah, mm -hmm. and oh. one thing for a go, we, we are working on getting a Literally Movies mug made. Oh, oh you cool. You told them. Well, I wanted oh, to. Nice. Why not? All right. Yeah. Nice. And we're get, it's only for people who are guests, so Chris is getting the first. That's true. Oh, oh, we make, oh we that's very kind. Excellent yeah. mugs. The we, people in my community. They know. We, we care about merch here. Sh Shiv, Miss Angie, you guys have you know in-game girlfriend mugs. You can attest to the quality. It is cool. very yeah. nice. So you got a mug coming, Chris. We're working on I'm that, very so. excited. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to t-shirts after that, but that's a whole other okay. deal. I don't all know right. if that's all he, that. He, he just loves nice. branding and merch. He Sorry. Loves I get it. Sorry. I get it. All right. It. It's going to be one long mug. Man, your community is fucking wow. savage. They're the worst. They're wow. the worst, yeah. <laughs> awful. You're always welcome. I look forward to seeing all of you again. Have a great weekend. Watch lots of movies, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.